Oh, yes! We're live! <laughs> All right. It's always fun. A lot of work that went into this kind of stuff to be live today. And mm. if this ends up in the YouTube recording, stay tuned because we are starting a little bit early. You could probably skip a 24, 20 some odd minutes uh, if this is live on YouTube. If it is not, um, or if it is, then meet Yannick right over here. He is the teacher's assistant today and a huge and instrumental part of bringing this to the table and making this kind of stuff happen. Just couldn't have done it without him. Could have done it without uh, Germ, who's behind the camera right now filming this. So there's this, um, you know, this, this little webcam over here. But <laughs> there's also two cameras over here and recording the entire thing. So it's pretty interesting. Um, and I'm super excited to see how many people show up. There's 500 plus people, 550 some odd people, maybe even more, who are showing up today, uh, or at least who registered today. What does that look like? I don't know, I don't know. But I am excited. I am excited for making all of this happen. I am excited um, to teach. And I am excited that Superhero Academy is finally a realized dream of mine, which was to start a school. I always wanted to be in the education program, so, you know. Okay, all systems are go here. Everything seems to be rolling. Let's see what Boom. Yes, yes. So type on Slack. I want to see if I have a, um, a notification if it makes a sound. Nope, it just pops up on the side. Good. You can uh, unmute yourself for now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and, and by all means, like, if there's a question, the, the one of the things I wanted to do is that if there's a question uh, and I've completely skipped over it, stop me. Literally stop me dead in my track if it's like that, if it's a pressing question that you feel is important, okay? If you feel it's important that I that I hammer it home, but basically I'm gonna I'm gonna talk for you know about 45 minutes to an hour de depending on what that looks like, and then um, and then uh, we're going. I'm so, gonna send you uh, a picture of something as well. Okay, and, and for the for the questions, you want me to link them to you as they come? No, okay. don't link all of them as they come. Okay. Just write them down. Like start writing them. Like copy paste them somewhere. And then just copy them and, and send them over, and then I'll answer a couple. Like, tr try and take the names, too, you know what I mean? Take the people who, who are asking the questions so that I can address those people. Um, yeah, but when do you want me to send the, re the, the, the relevant ones to you, I guess? If, if it's super relevant right now, right then, send me it right away. If, um, for the most part, I'm going to be telling people I'm going to take questions at the end for the most part. So okay. I will be taking questions completely at the end, um, but we'll see what... That looks like. Okay, let me send you. I'm sending you a picture of what I'm talking about in the order, the general order of what I'm talking about. Boom, 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 boom. Who's that? Sorry, that was my phone. I'm going to turn that off. That's probably my message. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Uh, 
There we go. A smiley face. <laughs> oh, it's been a long day. A very long day. We were going to do a whiteboard setup, but then decided that we, we should stick to the... Um, chalkboard? To the chalkboard, yeah. Because of the lights and stuff, it kind of was too glary with the light. You know, yeah, like I'm can... wearing white. I'm wearing white, so it looks like I look white. You know, when I'm white. When I'm, when I'm white. I'm trying to look white, period. I'm a white boy here. So what's the, uh, what's the gist on this roll call? Uh, the roll call is like when people come in... As before I start, I literally say hi to the, pe to the people coming in, ideally. But I want to see, like, okay, actually, I do see attendees. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Can we be back in 30 seconds, though? Yep, take it down. Young man. Ooh, last minute sign ups. At least my screen capture works now. Does this sound... Do you still hear me? Yeah. Does it sound better? Oh, very much so. Really? Yeah, what'd you do? I, I want to do that. What about this? No, too low. This is better? A bit higher. That's better. Do you hear me better now? Yeah. Like, like you hear me well. Period. Yeah. Flick it back to what you had before. What I had before was default. Go back and talk. Default. 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 Now this one. This one. This one. This one. That one's so much better. Okay. Good. I'm glad I looked at this. Where did you look at that? It's um it's because it's my um it's uh it's my mic. It's this mic right here. Okay. But it wasn't using it. It wasn't defaulting to that mic, which is weird. Mm. I'm glad I, I'm super glad I looked at that because I now yeah, you know, this it does sound better right now. Yeah. I can hear myself. Um but I always hear myself. That's the problem. Cuz now I only hear what's coming out of my computer, for example. 
but I can like I make it so that I can hear both, essentially. Mm. So is this too low, or like this too low? This too low? I mean, I talk pretty loud for the most part, so I'm not worried about being that low, but I just don't want it to sound too echoey or whatever. Well, no, that that could be a little low. This is a little low. Okay, so this is well, a when you're better. you're away from the microphone. And when here is it too loud? No. Does it like clip in any way? Do you find? No. No. Okay. Sounds weird. What about this? This microphone has some like weird switches on it. Yeah, I hear you playing with it. What about now? Now it's low. Yeah, now it's low. Uh, what about this setting? Oh, this is so much louder. Yeah, that side is pretty good. Whoa, okay. That's good. I don't know if this one better is better or the default one, which is this one. Mm, they're all good. Yeah. Yeah. The only one that was not good was when you switched it to too low. Yeah, the middle one. Yeah. Bam, 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 da, 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 da. Did you get an email? I mean, Every time you go to Gmail, it like logs you out or something. No, it's because I I didn't open in a new tab. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get an email. Oh, yeah, Nick, what are we gonna do with you? Oh, did he send you an email? Mm -mm. Okay, then go to Mad Mimi and be sure to send like go prepare an email. It's too loud. And literally say, for some of you, some of you have been uh, messaging me saying you have not gotten or, or are unable to find the link. Please find it, you know, please find it here. But only send it at 8 o'clock. I'll give you, like, a thumbs up or I'll tell you. Like, I don't, because what happens is if you send the generic link, I don't know who came or who didn't come. Okay. You know what I'm trying to say? Mm-hmm. Fucking <sighs> germ. Man, I got so many emails here. Germ, we're starting now. How's Marty? Check the mic levels. My mic should be on. Your lapel is in? Mm-hmm. Good enough battery, yeah. I put new batteries. Okay. Give me some audio. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. Cover your audio. Microphone. What? Cover it and talk. Cover it, like cover it, like that? Yeah. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. Blah, blah, blah. Testing one, two. 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 Test
Pretty good. Testing. They're all going into it right now. All right. Testing. I am giving you a test for audio. We are live on Google Hangouts where there are two attendees, me and Yannick. Woo! Okay. Oh, give me some, give me Testing one, two. We are in the Superhero Academy classroom, and I am super excited to teach what I have to teach today. Now yeah, recording? Not yet. You know, it might actually just not open it or do anything until 8, no? It's very possible. It's very possible that it doesn't open anything until 8, yes. And that the broadcast is going live. I, I'm assuming that the broadcast is probably going live on YouTube if you go and check it. They can't sign up until 8? No, no, I, I don't know if they're able to come in until 8. I would feel like they would be, though, with the link. You want me to try online? Yeah, if you have it. Are you signed up? Can I think just send me the link? Yeah, but go and sign up and see if you get the link, first of all. Uh... I literally hear my dad upstairs. Yeah, but once you start talking, it's going to be... Oh, yeah. I'm going to drown everything out. It doesn't seem like it's live broadcasting on YouTube, either. Oh no, I got uh I got a link twenty four minutes ago. Okay, you did get it linked twenty four minutes ago, so that's perfect. So it, it the link came out seven thirty. Yeah. All right. That's good, that's good timing. And yeah, it's not open. It opens in four minutes and fifty seconds if you join the link. If you join the link, it opens before. Oh, okay, good. All right. It has a countdown and everything. Excellent. Yeah, next says there's a countdown. It only opens in minutes. four minutes thirty seconds. Four minutes and thirty seconds. <laughs> well, yes and no, but then I get the chance to also speak to them and you know say, hey, where are you from? Blah blah. blah. And then the floodgates open. Yeah, and then the floodgates. <laughs> we'll see what the floodgates look like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited, man. I'm fucking excited. I'm proud of us, too. I'm proud of the, the, the team. I'm proud of everything. Um, but so you still see this not in verse, correct? Correct. All right. Well, sometimes it's in verse. Well, last time it was in verse. Remember we had to film it? But it was because I was screen capturing. That's why it was in verse. It would only be in verse on my computer. 
Mm-hmm. Remember, I was screen capturing. So it's inversed on my computer, but it's not inversed on Yannick's apparently. Which is weird. Yeah, I don't know why the fuck. Like, why do you have to confuse me like that? <laughs> but it, but it, you know what it does is because it it, it mimics. What it, you know why it does that, though? is so that when I lift my hand on this side, it shows up on the same side on my screen. So that it doesn't confuse me, right? Because if I went like this, and then my hand came up on this side on the screen or something, It'd it would weird. look kind of weird for me looking at myself. I sign up, and I get, like, two, two emails back-to-back. Two emails? Yeah, this yeah. is starting to send. If you got two emails, that's good. Webinar link, okay. And then the next one says... Okay. They're both. You probably got the like, the right before the class, and then the the other one. That's good. That's fine. Two minutes. Is this wow. Too low or? Yeah, it's low. Fill up your water and everything. Oh, I'm I'm good to go. Is this any Got a better? couple last minute slides. It's a little, it's a little low. It's still, it's, it's better. It's, it's better than the other one, but it's still a little low. Yeah, I got a couple last minute signups. Ten, ten last minute signups or something. That's on the good. Video? Just on that video, yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's good. At least you know there's ten people waiting. Yeah, no, it's great. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> I'm happy to, I'm happy that I caught somebody's Tuesday night. <laughs> like, fuck it. Uh, you got a battery there and a battery on the other edge of my brother's cor- uh, corner. Four. I meant two minutes, but it was like two forty. Now it's two minutes. Now it's two minutes. Yeah. Well, it's at eight. It's seven fifty-eight currently. It's gonna be at eight. Oh, because I don't have that on mine. Yeah, I don't. Hey, where's the second battery? Where's the second battery? Uh, around my bro- brother's corner. This one is charged here too, Germ. You know, this one is charged here, Germ, on the corner. Yeah, what? It might be kind of loud after all. My, mine's loud? Maybe. When I get close to it, it's loud, but when I'm here, it's not loud, right? Okay. We have three batteries here, please. Yeah. You have three batteries. I'm more worried about cards than I am about batteries. But I'm not worried about cards. There's another card here. There's a card there, and there's a battery here. But format this card. Are you serious? Like, no, no, no. You've got battery. You, I, this one's plugged in, so I'm not worried. But but the... Um, well, what I want to know... Yeah, what I want to know is... well, And also format this card when you when you switch. But if you're going to switch, switch this. They're all formatted. Okay. Yes, I'm going to switch that one. They're all formatted. Everything's ready. Okay, good. 40 seconds, I stand up, and I press the play. In 40 seconds, yeah. 35 seconds. Close your computer. Don't don't use that. I'm going to turn it I'm gonna turn it off once I see what it looks like. It's like there's no audio. The uh, audio's off. All the pages are off. <sighs> I'm going to keep my microphone muted. Most of the time, for sure. Do keep it muted most of the time, yes. Um, and give me a 10-second countdown, guys. Sorry. 10 seconds. No? Oh, I can't count because I'm up here now. Oh, some people are joining. Awesome. Falling right in. Do you guys hear me all right? Everyone who's there, do you guys hear me? There is a chat on the sidebar. Hey, everyone. I see tons of people flooding in. Lots of you guys. Where are you guys all from? Let me know in the chat bar. Where are you guys all coming in from? We're going to wait for a couple more minutes just to let some of the people who are a little bit behind schedule, uh, attend, and not dive in too quick. But I just want to know, do you guys all hear me very well? All right, good. Seeing, seems like I'm hearing everyone, or everyone's hearing me, sorry. Awesome. How you guys doing tonight? Let me have it.
How you guys feeling? You feeling all right? Doing okay? Your Tuesday night or Tuesday day wasn't too hectic? There's a little bit of like Tunisia. Wow, Tunisia, Tacoma, Utah. Pavi from T dot, Los Angeles from Brendan here. Uh, Emmanuel from Romania, Jack from Toronto, Fleet Commander. I know who Fleet Commander is of Ireland. Uh, Luciano from Brazil. Wow, Brazil, amazing. I'm so happy to hear you guys are coming from literally around the world for this. Michael Burgess, I know you. Uh, how you doing, buddy? Yakir, great. All right, awesome. 3 a.m., wow, somebody's really dedicated to being on, on this call today. <laughs> Kurt, thank you very much for showing up. Very happy to see all of you guys here. It seems like a lot more people are still flooding in, so I'm just going to wait a little bit longer, guys. I don't want to start without some of you. I definitely want to make sure that everyone has an opportunity to hear what we're going to talk about today, so I'm very excited. Jeremy D., the man behind the camera, is also here. Uh, Haytham, how's it going? How are you, sir? Or lady? Tunisia, wow. That's amazing. That's really absolutely incredible. Yeah, I'm glad there's a lot of people here too, Michael. It's very, very exciting. Also, I just want to make sure all of you guys see this straight, correct? So on my screen, I see it inversed, uh, but that's done on purpose for, for me. But I just want to make sure that you guys are all kind of reading this correctly and it's not backwards for you. Yep, it's good to roll. Okay. Still have loads of homework to do. Ah, don't worry about your homework. <laughs> if you're anything like what I was in school, you will do it at the exact last second. Like literally the teacher will be like, now it's time to submit your homework, please. And that's when you're starting to like write it out and just get it done and hand that in. Midnight in London, Nadia. Wow. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us on a Tuesday night at midnight. I appreciate it. Appreciate you guys taking the time. So how did you guys hear about this? How many, how many of you heard about this through the Valhalla Facebook page or through something related to Valhalla? How many of you guys heard about it through a article I wrote on Collective Evolution? Let me know. Still more people coming in. Couple more. We had about over 500 registrants. I've got over 100 emails this week with people filling out the superhero um, challenge forms and the impossible list forms. It was absolutely incredible how many emails I got this week. So bear with me, guys. There's some of you who I remember I recognize your names. Um, some of you I have not yet met. Irv, Yakir, wow, Pavel, Tori, Rance, Tuan, wow. Amazing. Tuan, da, da, da. Still some people flooding in here. Just waiting for that. Sylvia, I am more than happy to take the time to do this. And Casey, very happy to hear that you heard that from Phil Drillet. Phil is my man. He is um, somebody who's he's basically my mentor at this point. Very, very, very happy. Uh, you know, that you heard it from him. Luciano, wow. Or Luciano? Luciano. How do you say that, Luciano? <laughs> Phil's email too from Brendan. All right, awesome. C.E. Elvis, awesome. Catherine, also C.E. Valhalla FB, Valhalla Facebook. Through Valhalla. Yeah, a lot of you guys are through Valhalla. Amazing. Uh, like I said, I'm just going to wait a couple more minutes. I know you guys are eager to hear some of this stuff, but I just keep getting people coming in, so I just want to make sure that everyone is coming in here. Sustainable Human, yes, Dana, I love that. We are partners with Sustainable Human now, so it's very, very awesome to see that people are also coming to us from there. How long are we going to be here? Uh, I mean, technically, you guys can watch this at any point. So technically, you can leave at any time, and it will be pre-recorded, and you could watch it later. Uh, I do ideally ask you guys to stick around for at least the first hour, and then we're going to do Q&A at the end. So any questions that you guys have, Yannick over here, who I'm going to introduce right now, 
uh, Yannick Richard is the systems architect, the man behind all of this, all those emails that you got, all those things are all things that he helped me set up, uh, including some of the web pages and stuff, so I could not be doing this without him. And I, if you guys have any questions for me directly, or you really want to ask him or I a question, for the most part I'm going to be teaching, so I'm not going to try and read this chat window so much, but Yannick is sending me something on a chat on separately that I will be reading, so I will be taking some of these questions. He's going to be writing your names down, and we're going to be taking all, almost all the questions you guys are going to have at the end. I will stay as long as you need me to. Uh, and I'll answer any questions you have about Valhalla. I'll answer any questions you have about Superhero Academy. I'll answer any questions you have about being an entrepreneur or social, uh, social entrepreneur. You name it, I'll answer it. And what you don't see behind you is that there is also two cameras filming this uh, live right now uh, for a recording later. And there's a whole bunch of lights in here. So it's a nice little... I'm in a little cocoon of lights and cameras uh, that you guys aren't seeing. <laughs> Bradley, yeah. Stick around. Okay, great. I mean, st stay as long as you want. Um, anybody who misses anything here or wants to hear it again will be able to listen to it later. So that is great. Uh, okay. A little stretch over here. Give it one more minute. I keep seeing emails and names popping in on my screen here, so I just want to give that one last second. So Tunisia, Brazil, those seem to be some of the further places. London. Nobody from Asia right now? Anybody in like Taiwan or, or like Thailand or something? Ireland's out there too. Yeah, definitely Ireland's out there too. Okay, well, for anybody who is not here yet, we will just dive right in and they will have the opportunity to hear us out in a second. Yeah, you want to talk about some ideas? No problem. We'll take we'll take on that. So, um, first, I want to start by thanking every single one of you guys who has showed up today, who supports myself personally, Valhalla, Sustainable Human, Superhero Academy, uh, any of our partners, Collective Evolution. We are super, super, super grateful for every single one of you guys for showing up. Um, I cannot begin to express my gratitude for every single one of you for showing up. I mean, for for being here for being open to learning something new for being a part of alternative education, for being game changers and people who are looking to change your lives, to change the world, um, and being you know people who lead with your hearts and not just your minds, right? Who care about society, who care about the way this world is going and how things work, and who are here to learn and digest and ask questions too. So um, I'm going to invite all of you guys to just take a moment to ground in for a second. And what I mean by ground in is just kind of take a deep breath and let go of everything else that happened today on this Tuesday for you. And just, just be present in whatever is going on right now. Feeling your body. Grounding into the moment. And making sure that when you maybe open up your eyes again or come out of this, this grounding session, to just close other windows, things that are going to distract you. Just give yourself the time to be here and fully present for this hour uh, and for this class and, and for yourself. Okay, so for guys who didn't hear, I will be taking all your questions at the end. I'm going to be teaching a whole lot of new stuff, a whole lot of things that you may have never heard before. Um, and I understand that I have said this many, many, many times to different clients that I have, to different partners that we, whether we have at Valhalla or to different people, literally over and over and over again. So sometimes I skip stuff. Uh, and if I do, please just ask me it at the end or send it to Yannick. He will... Um, uh, send me it in a separate chat on the side. So the first thing I guys I want to ask you is are you guys willing to change the world? Are you guys willing to step up and be the person who creates your own story? Are you ready to make 
your life be empowered to the things that you want to do? Do you want to work from home? Do you want to be a social entrepreneur? Do you want to start a movement? Do you want to run a big online site? Do you want a big YouTube channel? Uh, are you looking to quit your job and do something else? Are you looking to support another superhero? Well, if you answered yes to any of these or anything remotely even close to that, like being a superhero, then to be honest, this is the class for you because Superhero Academy is all about that. We are all about empowering everyday superheroes to be engaging storytellers to be the real change that we need in this world right and to be that and to do that we have to be able to communicate that story so that one of the things we're going to be talking about today is how to tell a very engaging story and how to actually do that because there is a formula for doing that and it's four steps now there's a whole other version of this formula that is a little bit longer and I'll cover that at some point um, but it's very, very, very important to understand that there are four key ways of doing something like this. But before I dive into that, I want to dive a little bit into myself. For those of you who have never met me before, my name is Mark Angelo Coppola, and I am a social entrepreneur. I've been an entrepreneur for pretty much my entire life. Uh, I've been, you know, my first business was an indoor skate park that I you know, bought into with all my life savings at uh, in 2007, about eight years ago, and it since then I've literally been on this major journey, learning everything there is to know about business, learning everything from like how to fire taxes to uh, how to create real relationships, uh, how to sign legal documents or get a bank loan or get investors, um, how to make sure to pay your bills on time and who you can kind of push off sometimes, <laughs> who not to have a client as a client, who to have as a client, and also a whole lot of mistakes. I want to own up to the fact that being an entrepreneur is tough. It's not something that everybody and anybody can do, but it is definitely something um, that, that requires a lot of energy, and it is a very big challenge. But what I can tell you and empowers you is that more so than just the challenge of being an entrepreneur, really being an entrepreneur is also being a storyteller. And that to me is what has in, kind of clicked in my mind, and I'll tell you more about that in a bit, but that's what's clicked in my mind and actually made me start a marketing company with 18 people who we now collaborate with and are now kind of employed indirectly or directly from this marketing company. We've been doing work with people, like Reebok Hockey, major brand, uh, major websites with you know over hundreds of thousands of dollars a year in terms of contracts. Uh, I've done, uh, been a videographer. I've done events. I've done everything you could possibly think of in the marketing and online world, SEO, social media management, and we've combined all of that into two amazing enterprises that are really kind of taking over all my time now, which is Superhero Academy, an online interactive school for everyday superheroes, aka you. And uh, also the Valhalla Movement, which is a nonprofit foundation looking to make sustainability mainstream. Now, I will get into that in a little bit, but I do want to dive right in to the four key ingredients to telling an engaging story. Now, you guys might know some of these, but maybe you don't. So the first one is why. And I want to start by writing this down over here the first one is why all right so for those of you who don't understand what I mean by why it really means your mission your why is what drives you it's why you're doing what you're doing see it's not enough to just explain what you're doing right, like running an online interactive school, which is interesting, but it's another thing to express how empowering entrepreneurs or social entrepreneurs or everyday superheroes to step up and be those storytellers, to be those engaging game changers, that's different. When I tell you that we are on a mission to make sustainability mainstream at Bahala, that's very different than saying, oh, we have a 60-acre piece of land and we're building a sustainability learning center. The why is the mission. The mission is the most crucial thing to any story. Now, most people, most people start their stories with what they do or how they do it, right? But innovators, people who are looking to truthfully engage, start with why. 
Now, there's a famous TED Talk, probably the most, literally one of the most uh, watched TED Talks of all time with Simon Sinek, who literally dedicated his whole life to writing a book and teaching this uh, in a book called Start With Why. And it was funny because I actually had him on the podcast and I ended up discussing with him before and after the podcast. And it was great. It was just amazing how you realize the power of this why. Now, I want you guys to think about an organization in your mind that you think starts with why. Think about an organization, maybe like, a, like an Apple Computers, right? Putting a dent in the universe. Or maybe something that's just like a Valhalla movement, right? Making sustainability mainstream and being engaging storytellers that are looking to change the current culture and looking to propagate freedom culture. We started with that because that's something that is general enough, that is vague enough, that many people can agree with. And the second that you've inspired me, the second that I'm agreeing with you, I'm way, 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 way more likely to start listening to everything else that you're going to say compared to if you just tell me that you're an electrician or that you're a school teacher. But if you don't tell me why you're a school teacher or why you're an electrician, if you don't tell me the story behind any of that, then guess what? You're going to have a lot of problems trying to market something like this. You're going to have a lot of challenges trying to get people inspired. If you start with why, it is going to be the most empowering thing that you can do. So the why is your mission. People are inspired by your mission. People don't want products and goods and services necessarily. What they want, what they buy, what they, what they listen, what they become a follower for, what they become a dedicated supporter for is a mission. They want to hear your mission like, I want to feed 50 billion people by the year 2100. Or I want to end poverty or homelessness in America. Or I want to plant a million trees. Right? Now, the other thing is that I was saying the word I there. But the word I sometimes is also less powerful than we. Because guess what? If your mission is big enough and bold enough, like it should be, because the bigger and bolder your mission is, the more likely you are to achieve it. And I'll get into that. But if you are bold then the truth is that your mission is not done alone. So you can't just make your mission about you and about the I, but it's really about we, right? Community. That's what Valhalla is too. It's that our mission wasn't just about me. If it was called the Marco Polo movement, would you have been so inspired? But it's about we. Giving it a brand identity, giving it a name beyond something that is just catering to you allows more people to get behind it. Okay, so remember that when you're stating your mission, treat, please try and refrain from just using the word I. Use the word we or us or you at least. Talk to the person who is reading it. Don't just think about your own mindset when putting it out there. So the second thing that you need to know is the what. The what is something that most people understand. Oh, what is your business? I run a hair salon. What is your business? I run a dog kennel. What is your business? Oh, I'm a computer IT specialist. I'm a marketer. Most people ask, what do you do for a living? And anytime I'm ever asked, what do you do for a living? I always back up and go to the why. Every single time. Why? Because people are more inspired by what I'm going to tell them at that point versus just putting me in a box or in a category somewhere, right? Versus just saying, oh, that's what he does. Who cares about that? Or it's like, oh, yeah, that's what he does, but it doesn't really necessarily serve me. But if I tell you my mission as an individual, and if I tell you our mission as a collective, then that collective mission is going to have you asking for more. Because when I start with why, you're going to automatically ask me the next question, which is, well, what is it that you guys are doing, and how, or, and how are you doing it? Right? Because that's the third thing, the how.
Now, most of us, when trying to commit to a mission, when trying to commit to what we have inside of us, we try and we get caught up in the how. We get caught up in trying to figure out how we're going to do it. And I can tell you that I've never truthfully started a business knowing exactly how I was going to make it happen and how I was going to work. In fact, Every business I've ever started, whether it be the Valhalla Movement, my marketing company, the skate park, I had known nothing about any of them before. I had never ran a skate park in my life. I had never planted a tree and known anything about sustainability or solar panels or permaculture or earth ships or anything like that. And I had never truthfully been a marketer, ever in my life. How do you tra transition? That's a good question. I'm going to take that, Brendan. How do you transition from the why or to the why when somebody asks you about the what? Literally shock them by going to the why. Literally say, I'll tell you what I do, but I first of all, I want to tell you why I do it. I'm on a mission to... I'll tell you what I do, but first I want to tell you what I'm a part of and why we do what we do. We are on a mission to... Depending on what you're going to say, transitioning back to that why is super important. Now guess what? One of the best ways that a hypnotist hypnotizes you is that he shocks you. One of the ways that a magician shows you something, makes you look over here while he's doing something over here and, sh and does something, is he shocks you. If you're different, if you stand out of the crowd, you're going to make people notice you. If you want to be outstanding, you got to stand out. To be outstanding, you got to stand out. So if you're going to just say the box answer, the what, then guess what? No, most people won't be inspired. And guess why? Because they don't know your mission. They don't know why you got behind it. We connect to people, not just to things. We connect to that mission, that core, not just what you're doing and how you're doing it. Not to say that it's not innovative, not to say that large corporations that do have awesome missions are also innovative in what they do and how they do it. Okay, you hear about Apple, let's say, they're super innovative. Everything they do is different, right? They release this new MacBook, and it's like, oh, it only has one plug on the side now, or this watch that has all sorts of crazy stuff. Whether you like it or not, they are innovative, and the way that they put it out there is game-changing. So keep in mind that don't get stuck on the how. Realize that the most important thing that you can do is start with the why, Move to the what, then to the how, okay? The last piece, the last piece is the now. And I'm going to explain how all of this works in a story. The last piece is the now. So when you're in a conversation with somebody, okay, and you're talking and you're telling a story, whether you met them at a cocktail or at a bar or at school or at work, okay, if you start with the why, people are automatically going to want to know more about what you're doing and how you're doing it. And they're just going to have question after question after question after question. And the truth is that if you're an entrepreneur like myself, sometimes you get carried away in the number of projects that you have. But you have to know your audience. You have to know who you're talking to because they might want to hear different stuff. Like, for example, you guys, right, if a lot of you came from Valhalla, I know you guys possibly want to hear more about Earthships and permaculture and eco-communities. But if you came from Phil Drolet's list, maybe you're looking to hear more about entrepreneurialism and being a social entrepreneur or working from home. You are different audiences. You are different people who came from a different segment with possibly a different mindset. And it doesn't mean that one of these things is m not important to you. It just means that it might be less important to you. Now, that audience sometimes, okay, is also, that audience sometimes is also kind of mixed or it could be segmented based on what kind of place that you're at, right? So know your audience when, when you're at a bar, if the person's drunk, don't go down into the details. But if you're at a conference and the conference is all about online marketing, well, guess what? Chances are that that's what they want to hear about. So the now is your opportunity to tell them one thing that you want them to do to take action. So let me give you a perfect example. Why? Because you're in this classroom right now. 
And if you're in this classroom right now, and if you're listening to this right now, it's because you took that exact now action that I wanted you to take. Now that sounds weird, it's not trickery, but it is something that is very, very, very important. Now, for those of you, I just want to let you know that I'm going to offer you guys something very special at the end. I really want to make sure that you guys stick around. I'm going to tell you some extra stuff at the end too. I've got something incredibly interesting for you. But more than that, the one action that I wanted you to take when you went to that superheroacademy.net slash commit was join the free class. Sign up now. I didn't tell you to go and like us on Facebook and do this and do that. I had one opportunity. I told you why I was doing it and why it mattered to you. Because not just why I was doing it or why Superhero Academy was doing it, but why it mattered to you was very important. What I was doing and what I was offering, how it was going to work, which I showed you a video that said, well, this is the classroom and all you need to do is put your name and email here and then the now, which was sign up today. Sign up right now. Senior college, zero family backup. How can you get some funding? How do you get some funding? Guess what? Nobody will ever fund you ever if you're only talking about the what and how. I have never met an investor, and I've been in front of many investors before. I've gotten many bank loans before or things before. Uh, I've I've raised uh, many, 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 many salary. You know, I've, I've been made able to kind of. Get, connect and, and have find an income over a hundred thousand dollars a year or six figure salary or income every single year and none of it came from only spe speaking about the how. Now, I'm not saying it's not important. Obviously if you're gonna go in uh, and pitch something at a bank you're gonna have to f have to figure all of this stuff out but it's important that you go through that order manual. It's very very important that you actually start at the top. Start with your mission. Why are you there and why does that person give a shit? Because if you're not telling them that, then you're not telling them anything else. And you're going to bore them. Think about when you were in school, or if you are still in school. If the teacher's not telling you why you're learning what you're learning or what the implications of that are, it's kind of less interesting to you. But if I'm telling you some math equation, some formula, and I tell you what that application is, which is one step above, but beyond that, I tell you why it might be useful to you, then maybe you might pay more attention. Okay? It is super, super, super important. And the now is one thing that you want to ask of that person because you only have a small opportunity. Right? Imagine you're in an elevator. If I was in an elevator with, I don't know, I walk in an elevator, Elon Musk is there. I walk in an elevator and like one of my badass superhero, you know, like my own heroes is there. I would tell them four sentences. I would express gratitude and then tell them about my mission and how their presence also has inspired my mission. I would tell them what I do. And I do many things, but I would tell them the one that is specific to that conversation by knowing my audience. So if it's Elon Musk, I'm going to talk about Valhalla. But if I'm speaking to maybe, I don't know, if I'm speaking to um, Richard Branson, I might tell him about some project I have in space or an idea in space. I guess Elon Musk would apply to that too. But do you get what I'm trying to say? If it's a beautiful girl, I'll tell him something different too. I'll be like, oh, yeah, I run an enterprise, or, you know, big business, and I work from home. might tell him something different. It depends. Okay? But that what will be there, the how... The how isn't just that I'm going to explain to them how I do what I do. It also might be a way of telling a story that explains not only what I do and how I do it, but also what I see as a connection between you and I, or myself and that person, and how I also envision that playing out. So for example, if I want to raise money, I would tell them, I believe that I can create a win-win scenario for you. I believe that I have something to offer you that is going to make you happy, and I believe that you have something to offer me that is also going to empower me. So all of this, and I'm super glad you pointed that out, is all wrapped up in... win-win scenarios. If you're telling a story and at the end of the story, there's no moral to the story, there's no action step to the story, there's nothing to really learn, then none of this 
matters. The why, but how, and now will not work unless you're creating that win-win scenario. So if you need an offer, if you want something, you have to, number one, you have to ask for it. That's the now. You have to start with your mission, go into what you want, how you want it, how you see that working between you two, and then the now piece. So Yannick's bringing me Irsida asked, how can you make a link between the what and the how, connecting your needs with theirs? Well, to be honest, that's something I think I'm going to describe a little bit later on, but I'm going to touch upon it right now, which is people don't buy products. They buy wins. They buy people creating something that helps them. It's not just your product that you're connecting. You're possibly connecting something other than that. So, for example, if um, I sell you, give me something, name anything anybody wants me to go with. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it from you guys. I think this is going to be even more powerful. Something that I should sell right now and how I'm going to connect that from the why to the what to the how to the now. Anything you possibly want. There's a delay. Yeah, there is a delay. Okay. So I'm just going to run with something. How about this? I'm just going to run with a camera. If you're running with a camera and I and you are or I'm looking to sell you a camera. Okay? A camera is super important to you not because of what it is that it takes pictures, but because it captures memories. Cameras do more than just take pictures or take video. They capture your life, and your life matters to you. It matters to you because you'll never have it again. And maybe it's not just your life, but maybe it's your kid's life. So to solve you being able to capture your life and the people who you love, we invented a camera. It has 1080p video, super amazing quality pictures, and is something that works incredibly well with Mac and PC. It's also something that you guys can easily download and send to all your loved ones to be sure to share it because we know that that's important to you. Our camera is available in store right here at this price. All you need to do to save your memories and to make sure that everything that you have is long lasting and there for you is to buy this camera right now. You see what I did there? I started with why the camera was important. Yes, what it, do, what it did, but be the next level of what it did. Not just take pictures and do video. That's the what. What it does is take pictures and do video. I know that. But it's acting, and it, but it's, acting with, it's not just acting with gravity. It's acting with, with, with truth, with the truth of what this is. Why did you show up tonight? Why did you show up? What does your story look like? What you say is a matter of selling relationships and values rather than products and financial gains. Yes, absolutely. The only thing that sells is relationships and values. Absolutely. It's, it's not just about creating products and services. It's about creating value. It's about creating wins. It's about helping people. It's about helping individuals. If you show that you care, people will care back. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so the next thing I want to dive into, okay, beyond the why, what, how, and now, is beyond that, is a win-win scenario, is the thing, the secret to make you 42% more likely to achieve your dreams. 42% more likely to achieve your dreams, one simple thing. And this thing occurred to me when I had completed a bucket list. I created something at one point in my life that was beyond a bucket list, however. I had written out this little bucket list, and one of the last items on that little bucket list that I had that I wanted to do was go and visit the Great Wall of China. And I went. And I had just sold my skate park. I had just went off 
into the back of a backpack. I went a five-week journey in Australia. I was now at the beginning of a five-week journey in China. Nobody spoke English. I had such a hard time getting anywhere. And then I had finally, after hours and days trying to get to the wall, I finally got to the Great Wall of China. And I had this incredibly powerful moment there that I had completed a bucket list item. But really what I had felt is that I had completed the impossible. I never thought that I was ever going to see them, something like this realized. I never, ever, 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 ever thought that I would be on the Great Wall of China. I knew it was possible, but it was imp I felt like it was impossible for me. And I had proved that wrong. I had done it. I had went, now I know it seems trivial, it seems small, but it's not. It's it's really, really, really not. Um, it was super important for me. And it really changed everything. And on that wall, I took a 30-minute break to write down what I call an impossible list. An impossible list is not just a bucket list. It's not just a list of far-off dreams. But it's really a list to challenge you. It's really a challenge for you to step up and do those things. Because you know what it is that makes you 42% more likely to achieve your dreams? The simplest thing ever. Writing it down. If you write it down, you are 42% more likely. And this is not me saying this. This is not some marketer telling you this. This is a peer-reviewed scientific study. Because if you write it down, you are more likely to schedule it. You're more likely to make an action plan to see it realize. Because I truthfully believe that through intent we are the architects of the universe. That if we intend it, but really intend it, not kind of intend it, then we are the architects of the universe. So I want you guys to take down two seconds, just two seconds, grab a pen and a paper and write down something that you are committed to doing right now that you believe is impossible. Write down one item on your impossible list. One item. The number one thing that you wanted to learn about coming here. The number one thing maybe that you wanted to have as a business. Because if you write it down, you are a hundred times more likely to achieve it. Now, hundred times is a little bit more than 42%. I know some of you guys are saying that. But you are 40, seriously, you are 42% more likely to achieve it. So take a second and write something down. And I want you, after you write it down, to put it somewhere where you're going to see it every day. Wrote it down last night, Brennan. Great. Write it down, guys. Write it down. Put it somewhere you're going to see it. Put it as the background on your phone, the background on your desktop. Stick it above your bed when you lay down on your bed so you see it in the morning. Put it in your pocket and carry it with you all the time. I have something that I carry with me all the time that I got in the Great Wall of China. When I wrote my impossible list, I have it with me at all times. It reminds me that everything is possible. And it also helps me make decisions, but that's something else. I'll get into another day. So write it down. Write down why you came here, what is impossible to you, what do you think that you can or cannot achieve that you really want to see realized. Now let me tell you another secret. This class was all about helping people like you commit to your dreams. You just wrote down that dream. And the only way to get there, the only only way is that you're going to have to jump off that cliff. You're going to have to take a serious step in the direction of actually doing it. And the only way that you're going to actually do it, because there will never be the perfect time, there will never be this truthful opportunity for you to have the perfect moment to be able to do something like this. It's not necessarily when you quit school school, when you graduate, it's not when you get that promotion, it's not when you're going to have enough money to be able to do something like this, it's right now. It's right here, 
right now. You will never have a better opportunity or a better moment than today. Because truthfully, any other time is just an excuse. And don't get me wrong. I am victim to this excuse sometimes too. There are sometimes I'm like, ah, oh, not right now is not the time. It's maybe, mm, I don't know if I should take that risk. Yes, take it every time. The sp especially if you're catching yourself in that negative mindset. Because if you're catching yourself in that negative mindset, then the truth is that you're going to have to go back on it at some point. You might move forward and think you're progressing and get to the end of your school or get that promotion, but you won't be any happier. You won't be any closer to that goal that you wrote down. You will not be in a better position necessarily if you are waiting for tomorrow, if you're waiting for something to happen versus doing it today. Look, I studied marketing and, and, and entrepreneurship and I learned freaking jack shit in school. Nothing. They didn't teach us how to t pay our taxes. They didn't teach us how to open up a, a company. They didn't teach us how to get financing. They didn't teach us anything. They told, told us like, the four P's of marketing, product, place, production. Pfft. This is bullshit. They made us make fake business plans or fake things that we have never, ever, ever done and we will never, ever do, but you have the opportunity of, of making strides, taking one step closer to your goal right now, but you have to commit because there is no way to secretly commit other than to jump off that cliff. You have to take flight. You know, I, I read something literally, I think, yesterday that said a typical entrepreneur is somebody who jumps off a cliff and builds a plane on the way down. And I fully, fully, fully support that statement. Don't get me wrong. There's not, there is a difference between good timing for something like taking the right moment to say or do something, but... Also, a very big difference between not um, between not um, between not acting now, between not doing what you are supposed to be doing. That moment is right now. That moment is today. So, do you guys feel like you guys are getting a lot of value out of this? Do you guys feel? Like this is kind of inspiring you to live up to that. Mindy, thank you so much. But do you guys feel that? Do you feel that urge to change the world now? Do you feel that urge to be a social entrepreneur and earn a living doing such? Do you feel the urge inside of you to take that action right here, right now, today? Not wait another minute to being able to be on the path that says that you are going to be that entrepreneur that you want to be. Are you going to be that game changer? Are you going to step up and be it today? Because if you're going to be it today and if you feel like you're getting this value, I really want to share with you a very special offer and I want to tell you a story. Because when I started the Valhalla movement, I felt like I was a fraud. I felt like I knew nothing. All I knew was that I had to start. All I knew is that I had watched 50 plus documentaries in a year and that something had to happen. That I had to make it happen. And that I wasn't going to wait for the government or for the schools or for the big organizations and corporations to make it happen because it's not going to. Nobody's going to fulfill your dreams other than you. Nobody. And when we started, I we went out, me and Jerm, who's right behind the camera, we went out right on the piece of land, planted a tree, and I'd never, ever, ever heard of permaculture, never heard of earthships, knew nothing about sustainability. Nothing. I mean nothing. I had never, ever planted a tree in my life, barring like a biology class or something or some science class that I had in high school where we did some photosynthesis exercise. I knew nothing about this kind of stuff. Zero. Okay? Zero. But that can change. Because the number one thing that helped me get to where I am is people. It's people like myself talking to you right now who inspired me, who showed me a way 
whether it be through documentaries that I had watched, whether it be through attending live classes like this, whether it be by paying mentors or just asking people to be my mentor, whether it be by by just trying it, by literally physically doing it, planting the tree or building the Earthship greenhouse on our land, all of that knowledge just came. I wasn't an expert in sustainability. I wasn't getting paid to go around the world to talk about entrepreneurship and sustainability a couple of years ago, but I am today. I make a six-figure income doing this today, doing what I love to do, and you can too. And I really mean that, and this is not to sell you bullshit. Because I really believe that you can live your dreams too. And you're now already 42% more likely to live that one dream that you wrote down. So I want to tell you something about a class that I'm starting for the first time ever called Be Your Own Hero. So if you're interested in earning a great living, accumulating wealth in the currencies of purpose, empowerment, and dollars, while having an enormous impact and being your authentic self, then this is the class for you. It's the eight essential steps to earning a living as a social entrepreneur. And what I mean by social entrepreneur is it's an entrepreneur who cares, an entrepreneur who wants to make a serious difference, an entrepreneur who wants to have a deep impact, who wants to have a legacy. Okay? Because there are entrepreneurs who run regular businesses every single day but aren't necessarily thinking about having that big impact, and that's okay, and that's totally fine. But this class is designed for people who are ready to be their own hero. And in this class, you can learn eight steps. It's a week-by-week -week class every Tuesday night, exactly like tonight, hosted on this webinar, where you're going to learn eight simple things. The secret formula for telling an engaging story. So I told you four steps of a formula, but there really is an eight-step formula, literally talking about you know, almost like the villain of the plot or the negative reputation environment a superhero and how they all mesh together and formulate a very good story. A story that is told in some of the best movies online or offline, sorry, in, in theaters all the time. There is a formula for a superhero style movie and I'm going to teach you that. The second thing I'm going to teach you is documentation. Documentation is the most important thing that you can ever do to be able to live that higher purpose. Because if you don't tell people what you're doing, if you don't tell people that you're doing it, nobody knows. It's not a mission anymore. If it, you, It's an island of you. But if you document, if you pull out your iPhone or your Android or your laptop, you make a website or you put out a little video, it doesn't have to be the best quality, but if you document, you have an opportunity to be able to tell that story and continue to tell that story consistently. The third thing that people can learn in this class is offering value. Why people buy value, not products. People buy what the product does for them, not the product. I don't buy a camera just because it takes pictures for the sake of taking pictures because I buy the camera for why. It, why that, what those pictures represent to me. People want that value. People want to know that what you're offering them is a solution to either their problem or something that they truthfully need and truthfully care about. And I believe that every one of you has an opportunity to offer that value to people. So I'm going to teach you how to do that and what I've learned and all the mistakes that I've learned doing that kind of stuff. Um, the fourth thing that is super important, very, very known word in uh, entrepreneurship and in marketing is avatar building. Avatar building is knowing your audience, knowing who you're speaking to. Right? You have to know who you're talking to and what's going on if you're going to be able to sell to them. You have to know the needs of a potential client if you're going to really be able to communicate effectively and actually have them care about what you're offering. Not what you're selling, what you're offering. Okay. The fifth thing is branding. Super important. Let me tell you why. Golden arches? What does that mean to you? Eat fresh? What does that mean to you? Put a dent in the universe? Think different? What does that mean to you? Guess what? That's branding. Now, you don't have to have millions or billions of dollars to be able to make a big brand like McDonald's or Subway or Apple. Okay? But you can brand yourself and associate yourself to the things that you want to be associated to. For example, you want to open up a dog salon again? I'll go with that example. 
guess what? Putting a dog on your logo might help. Having a little logo with, with something related to a dog or a leash or a bone or something, guess what? That's good branding. Learning the basics of that branding could save you an enormous amount of time. I have spent literally hours upon hours building people's brands online. I, like I said, I, run, I've, I still run a marketing company with 18 people who build brands all day, every day. Reebok Hockey, $300,000 job building their brand and their website online every day. We've got a team of people literally dedicated to building Reebok, uh, Reebok Hockey and CCM Hockey's website every single day. They pay us $300,000 to build their brand. It is worth a lot. And the big corporations, the big people out there know this and they use it. And you can too. The sixth thing is positive associations. Okay, So what I mean by positive associations is, for example, when I went out there on Valhalla and planted a tree, I was associating myself to that tree and what it represented. When we said that we were building the Valhalla movement and we were a nonprofit, that was an association that exists in your mind. Right? I say nonprofit and it already exists in your sphere, not in what I've told you, but just in what you know about nonprofits and what that means to you and how that communicates to you. So positive associations and collaborations as well. So I currently work with Sustainable Human, Collective Evolution, Overgrow the System, uh, numerous people out there. And we have associations to these people, and half of you literally came in because of those associations and not just because of the Valhalla brand itself. Maybe some of you have never met me before ever, and that's the point, is because I associated myself to other people who are doing awesome things, and I also associated Valhalla and Superhero Academy to do that kind of stuff, and I created real rapport with these people, and you can do it too. So no matter what kind of business you have, you can associate to other people who are doing it in that business as well. The seventh thing is pricing. Right, pricing, generating money, getting generating cash flow. That's tough. Okay, but it doesn't have to be tough. People people are willing to pay for something that they want, truthfully, or that is truthfully going to solve a problem for them. So pricing is super, 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 super important. Okay? And it doesn't need to be something you have to rack your brain over. There is ways to price your offer to sell, not to try and sell your offer. There's a difference, okay? The last one, the eighth thing, is delivering happiness. Delivering happiness means that people don't just buy offers once. You don't just go after the client that you might you know, sell something to that they didn't really need. You really want to deliver something that's going to make them smile. You really, really, really want to deliver something that's going to del make them happy, make them feel this in their heart. And craft offers that truthfully stick. Okay, so at the end of this eight-week class that is going to be recorded in the exact same way that this class is and you guys can watch over and over and over again, you will have the superpowers or a clear recipe for being self-employed and be able to work anywhere in the world because literally I work for three months out of, out of 12 around. You know, last year I was in Argentina, Brazil. Uh, I went to Europe. Uh, recently I was in California for three and a half months. I went to Montana recently. I've been working every single day everywhere I was. Um, a clear path to also earning a living, doing what you love and following your truthful bliss. A commitment to that mission that you wrote down or to all the missions that you have in your mind. And that's going to keep you highly motivated. Now, I'm not going to lie. I work all day. But that's because I love what I do. I'm happy to go to bed tired, to wake up the next day and be super invigorated doing what I do. Because I'm not doing it as a job. I'm doing it out of passion. I do this because I truthfully care. You also are going to have the superpower of a new reputation, right? Telling that story, telling that why, you can build that reputation to empower you. You can build that reputation so that people, when looking for your offer, will find you or remember you, okay? You can build a following or team. You could build a movement with these kind of skills, as I have done, as Valhalla has done. And you can build a deep understanding for being able to sell true value online which is super, super, super important. But more than anything, more than anything, the most important thing that you're going to learn is real-world experience and real-world results. Because none of this is worth jack shit if you ain't doing it for real, if you aren't learning for real, out on the ground, with your missions, with your businesses, with your ideas, coming to fruition and getting those results. And in fact, I guarantee it. This is a class that I'm offering to you that I absolutely guarantee. 
Now, what I want to do is let you know one of the most important things. Because you can learn all of these things some way or another. You can watch or read a whole bunch of different books. You can watch a whole bunch of documentaries, YouTube videos, and all this stuff. And don't get me wrong, there's great information out there. In fact, I learned it from somewhere too. But I have never, ever, ever given a class like this, in a big group like this, in the same way for such a low price, in the same way that I'm, I'm committing to doing something like this for you. 60 minutes every single week with as many questions as you want. And I am going to help you one-on-one -on -one be able to answer every single one of your questions. In fact, that's also why Yannick is here. He's a teacher's assistant. He's not just a systems architect. He is going to be there to help you every single step of the way. Keep you accountable. We're going to pair some of you up, those of you who decide to join and commit to this class. We're going to pair you up to also be accountable to each other to make sure that you guys are playing upon the strengths that you guys have. And we're going to be here for you every single step of the way. We're going to invite you to a private community where you'll be able to ask us a question throughout the entire day. It's something that we run on Slack. We also are going to have one on Facebook, but we run it on Slack where I get a personal message and a vibration in my pocket every single time you have a question. So you can ask me a question at any time. Okay? Beyond just that 60-minute class. Beyond, you know, just the, the, the kind of the assignments that I'm going to kind of challenge you to do every single week. And the key to that success is that accountability, is that community, is that teamwork. Not just the teamwork with me, not just the teamwork with Yannick, not just the teamwork with that other person, but the teamwork with the people around you in your own life too. Because if you tell your parents or your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your, your friends that you're doing this, then people are going to get behind you if you inspire them, if you lead with your why. I promise you this. Okay? So we're here to keep you accountable. And I just want to go over one more time what I'm offering here. An eight-week class called Be Your Own Hero. The eight essential steps to being able to earn a living as a social entrepreneur, as an impact maker, to build your legacy and to go bold. The support group, the chat, to be able to talk to me, Arianic, or anybody in the group at any time. Accountability partners, and we're even offering one-on-one -on -one coaching and masterminds for any of you guys that are li listening or interested in doing something like that. So what a mastermind is, is the ability to create a round circle meeting outside of the class with five or six of us, including myself, where we listen to each and every one of you with 15 minutes on the hot seat to be able to express back and forth what it is that you need the most help with. And the entire group, the hive mind of the group, is there to make sure that you be able to come and put all of this together. Okay, So this is a one-time offer. I am never going to give this class again live in person like this ever again. Okay? I am done this class over and over and over again. And in fact, I earn, like I said, a six figure plus income doing this for people professionally, millionaires, big businesses like Reebok or like uh, you know, the, the Vala movement or all these things. And I normally run this kind of class at five thousand dollars. I'm not even kidding you. I literally, in the last, just in the last two months, I've given this class for $5,000 to numerous people. But now I'm offering you this class in a group together, access to me all the time, literally answering with you as soon as I possibly can, every single time, and that's very often, trust me, anybody who speaks to me on a regular basis will know. I'm offering you it at 94% off. Why? Because I truthfully care. Because I really believe in an alternative system an alternative education, something to truthfully empower people. And like I said, your, your satisfaction, your results are guaranteed. If you don't feel that this changed your life, if you don't feel that you didn't learn anything by the end of it, and you attended every single one of the classes, and you just have a quick conversation with me to have that feedback and be able to kind of exchange what you felt didn't occur for you, then I'll give you your money back. I guarantee you that you guys are going to see these kind of results, and there is no better time to act other than today. So it's just this simple. I'm going to send you guys to a sales page or to a page that allows you guys to, to, to see all of this stuff, hear it, read it, watch it on a video. You can see all of this stuff, and I'm going to take every single one of your questions right now for as long as you guys want me to be here, okay? So, Yannick, if you guys can send that out... So yeah, we're going to be doing some other free classes from time to time, but this 
class, this um, this eight week class is going to be a one time thing. Yeah, this is. I mean, I'll, I'll maybe give it a, in the future, but there's only so many classes that I can give uh, on a regular basis. I already have a pretty full schedule with the number of people that I coach and consult with uh, consistently. Um, and uh, no, Yannick, I just want to send people to the page here. So I'm going to post it over on this side over here. But uh, no, this is so. Like I said, this is something that um, we will not be doing over and over and over again. Um, it's just something that we're going to have to. Uh, find a way to kind of do as many times as I possibly can. I'm going to try and cover different topics eventually, uh, like how to make a world-class podcast, very specific stuff to movements and stuff. But in this class, you can really learn all of it. This is kind of the, the more general class where you can learn the pricing, where you can learn everything that it takes to make something like this possible. Um, and the alternative solutions and education is just something that's super, super, super important. It's always been my dream to run an alternative school, and that's what Superhero Academy is all about. And you know, uh, I took a I took a giant leap personally. I literally quit all my jobs. I had a marketing company doing super well. It was making a uh, boatloads of money doing what I loved at the time. But then I started to feel out of alignment, and I really started to want to find a way to be empowered to do what I truthfully loved. And what I truthfully loved at this point is is teaching, is is empowering people like you guys. Is you know, I'm on a mission to make your dreams possible, because I'm already. Truthfully, I'm already on the mission of, of going to my, my dreams. The class is 297. The basic class is 297. It is all eight weeks are included in the 297. The access, the accountabilities, all of that. Plus, there is options for one-on-one -on -one coaching. So you can have this this call literally throughout all every, all eight weeks if you want. You can have it one time at any choice time of your choice, um, and you can also have it at a whole bunch of like, you know, you can have it here and there, we can, we can you know, talk about doing something else. And the other thing is that by joining now, you also join the community forever. So you're going to have access to me for basically forever through this kind of group. Um, and uh, that's a limited time offer because I will not be able to do that for very long. You know, we have over 2,000 visitors to our Valhalla website every single day, uh, where I'm now associated to uh, consulting and a strategic advisor on uh, many different websites with over 20 million visitors a month at this point. So uh, it's not going to be forever that I'm going to be able to do something like this. Um, but I am offering it now. I am taking this risk now, and I believe that it's worth it. I really believe that this is something uh, that incredibly empowered me. You know, I personally spend over, uh, I want to say, three and a half grand a month personally, for me, for mentorship and for different classes that I take all the time and for different things. I've invested over... I want to say $250,000 over the last kind of eight years in myself or in different things that I've learned. Um, I, I'm, it will never, ever, ever be this cheap. I am telling you, it's just, this is, this is as, literally as low as I can go, and it's because I really care about making this happen. So um, if you guys have any questions, I am more than happy to take them right now. The deadline for registering is, uh, for that price, this 297 price is literally in the next 24 hours. Um, and we're going to be kind of promoting it throughout the week until the start of next class, which is next Tuesday at 8, 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and it's going to be every single week after that. So if, even if you can't make it one week, don't worry. You have all the recordings are all going to be sent to you. You'll be able to listen to every single thing that you want. And like I said, you'll always be able to have access to me too. Jose, thank you so much. So, um... Is there any other questions, Emmanuel? Emmanuel, yes, no problem. I'll give you the week, okay? I'll give you the week. If you need to get that money together or whatever, I'll give you that week. I'll make sure to lock that price in. But I just need to know that you're going to commit to it. Violet Moon Motherhood. Brendan. I want to see if I missed any questions here. Emmanuel, location is not a problem, by the way. I didn't see that question earlier, but it is absolutely not a problem. You can do this anywhere in the world. I really believe that. Brendan, it's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll lock that in for you for a little bit longer. That's okay. So do you guys have any questions for me about Valhalla, about this program? Can I tell you a little bit more? Emmanuel, yes, 48 hours is fine. 
Will I, will I be teaching anything about taxes? I can definitely teach something about taxes. I, where are you from, Mindy? Where, where, are you, where are you paying your taxes right now? Just grabbing some water, guys. After all this talking. I'm very sure to commit your dreams. And you can ask anybody at Valhalla and how many people I've, I've you know, helped there and how many people I've coached with. I'm more than happy to bring somebody on the line. You know, Yannick, how about uh, you chime in for a second. Unmute your mic and let people know how, how it has been working with you, for example. Hey, how's it going? Do you guys all hear me? I hear you. Yeah, go for it. All right. Uh, so far, it's been going great. Um, been doing a lot of work, uh, but the work that I enjoy doing, that's what's the best part about it. Mm. And you feel like working with myself, Superhero Academy, Valhalla has literally changed your life? I mean, tell, tell us your story. I mean, I know you were, I know your story. You were unemployed. You were in school. You were hating it. Tell me a little bit more. Oh, yeah. I was, I was doing uh, pretty much what everybody else does, just going to school because that's what we're told to do. I was doing engineering, did three years out of four, and then realized that I wouldn't want to be sitting in an office typing on a computer or doing things for other people and getting lost as a cog in the wheel. So that's when I started looking out um, into what I can do for myself. And obviously Valhalla was something that was really interesting to me, so I started jumping more into that with you guys, and now here I am. <laughs> So now Yannick earns a living, uh, literally went from jobless to earning a living uh, that's promising over $50,000 a, a year in uh, just what? I mean, uh, two months or two and a half months of really working deeply together? Oh, yeah. It doesn't take that long. It's, <laughs> it's all about a mindset, and then when you get yourself out there with the right, really knowing how to pretty much phrase what you've already been doing, but just explaining it to people clearer definitely helped in my situation. Because the mm -hmm. skills was not what was I was lacking. It was really just explaining myself to others. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to take some of these questions right now. First of all, David Armstrong, uh, I saw your message. Yes, the answer is yes. We'll figure that out. Um, uh, just stay, stay here if you can for a bit. Kurt, uh, what opportunities for involvement are available at Valhalla? Uh, there are tons. We are always accepting writers. We are looking for people with different types of talents, whether it be webinars, uh, whether it be uh, website management, uh, video production, you name it. We actually launched something called the Valhalla Agency. So the marketing agency that has been running for uh, the better part of six years now is actually merging, uh, and we're only accepting clients at this point uh, who are change makers. So we only work with kind of social enterprises and enterprises that we care about. So that's one thing. There's a whole bunch of stuff on that front. Um, okay, so Nicholas, do you know Ty Lopez, and would you be able to compare his program to his, or this program to his? I can't really compare what program you're talking about exactly. What I can say is that in this program, you're going to learn really the eight essential steps to be able to do that. Um, like I said, everything from branding to avatar building to pricing to creating, you know, delivering happiness, being able to truthfully uh, commit to your mission and tell that story. Um, more so than just the why, but how, and now. This is like a very good pitch format and stuff, but just also doing it in a way that um, uh, gets people kind of motivated. Um, there's a whole lot there. Uh, the other thing is I know is that most of these people don't offer a 100% money-back guarantee. Uh, some of them do. I, I'm not sure in, in uh, Lopez's case, but, hey, I, I, you know, this is, I, I, what I know is what you're going to learn in this program. Put it that way. Uh, okay, so let me back up a bit here on some of these questions. What is my one-to-one face-to-face -to -face consulting fee? Uh, right now, it is about to go up. It was recently $500 an hour. So I normally, on a one-on-one -on -one basis, with any work that I do, whether it be marketing or coaching or all that kind of stuff, is normally $500 an hour. I'm actually offering it to you guys for cheaper if you do sign up for that one-on-one -on -one kind of coaching, um, which I'd be more than happy to do. I've, I've been doing it with, uh, at this point, I now work with seven one-on-one -on -one people. 
um, on a daily or a weekly basis. And then, you know, uh, over we currently manage over 100 websites with our marketing company. Uh, da -da. Uh, so, yes, Mindy, I will be able to help you, by the way. Uh, how do we grow Valhalla, your SIDA? Uh, so, how do we grow Valhalla? We continue to tell the story. We continue to document, which is the second thing you're going to learn how to do, um, by putting things out there consistently, making a website, putting out blogs, telling the story of what we're doing. And by telling the story, people started to join the story. You know, when we had known nothing about Earthships, um, and then all of a sudden we were like, hey, we're going to build an Earthship, and then all like the Earthship experts and all the people who had went to the academy and all that kind of stuff just started poking around. It sounds like it sounds crazy, but when you put something out there to the universe, people tend to find you. The universe tends to reward that, um, and that's how we've been able to grow Valhalla. I mean, I can answer more specifically how we've been done it, but I would say that the number one thing we've done is tell stories and be um, be engaging and and be inspiring. Focus on the solutions, not just the problems, which I felt you know all these documentaries that I had watched for many many years had focused on. Um, yeah, <sighs> Emmanuel, how scary was it to give up everything to follow your dream? Uh, literally, I gave up a six figure salary to follow my dream. I had given up my life savings when I was 18 to buy half of an indoor skate park. Uh, I ended up selling that indoor skate park three years later and traveled the entire world for four months, the better part of uh, three and a half or four months. Um, I've given up everything time and time again. I continuously do it. I think every entrepreneur does and has to. Uh, there's no other way to be an entrepreneur, truthfully. Um, and anybody who's telling you otherwise is literally bullshitting you. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's very it's very scary. It's definitely something that you got to do. Um, and it's just, it's the only way to do it. Pavel, I'm going to get to your, your question next, Tori. Uh, Pavel, can you reiterate the difference between the what and the how? So the what is what you do, what you're selling very tangibly. So I'm going to go back to the camera example, for example. The what in this case is the camera. The why is, is capturing moments, capturing capturing love, capturing beauty, capturing, you know, capturing a capsule of time that you'll never be able to capture again. That's the why. The what is it's a camera. The how is how it works. How does it really empower you? Oh, does it capture video? Does it capture photos? What kind of photos? What specifications does it have? Right? And the now is here's the price, buy it here at this store kind of thing. Right? That's a very simple, easy example of that. But the what is just what it is, right? It's like saying, what do you do for a living? And you say, I'm an electrician. Well, then I ask you, well, how do you, how do you be an electrician? And I say, oh, well, I work on commercial buildings or residential, or I, I hook up the blue wire with this wire and blah, 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 blah. That's the how, okay? The what is the electrician. It's just the, def the definition of what you're selling. Um, and that's what most people look for. That's what most people ask. It's the kind of question that you get very regularly at parties or at whatever. Um, but it's not the question that you should lead with, and it's not the question that I've ever led with, and I've definitely felt uh, that very much empowered me. Does Valhalla have a network like forms to chat with people, up like-minded people, or is there another place that you can recommend? Uh, the number one places that I go that I can recommend is Collective Evolution and High Existence. They both have chat forms. We are working on something right now. Uh, I can't dive too far into that, but um, we do have private chat forms for like Slack. So if you join the class and you join the community, there is a chat form that you will have access to me and to everyone uh, consistently. Also, within the Valhalla movement, we have a pretty big group uh, that chats literally regularly, and we kind of run the Valhalla movement by chatting online, either through Facebook or some of us through Slack. Um, and we all just kind of communicate and collaborate around the world. You know, one of our members is in India right now, for example. Yet he's still working on things at Valhalla and still taking care of stuff. So, um, but I, if you know, for if just online conversations, a conversation you want to be able to join uh, that is not so private, let's say, like this class, uh, Collective Evolution, High Existence. But if you want to have a conversation with me regularly, it's going to have to be through Valhalla or Superior Academy. And the best way and the cheapest and easiest way is going to be definitely by joining something like this class. Um, okay. Kurt, what opportunities are for involvement uh, are available at Valhalla? Tons of them. We have volunteers that come out every single week. Some weeks there's like 60 people who literally show up at the land. Uh, there's volunteer opportunities for writing articles, uh, creating videos, creating content online, depending on where you're at. We're also going to be doing a, a community center build, sustainability learning center build, where we are launching new housing plans called the Valhalla Villas, uh, in this spring, and that's something very, very interesting. It's uh, basically we're we're making uh, a version of Earthships that my mom would 
be proud of and be willing to buy, and as well as the mayor, and, and something that's stackable to the sky, buildable in 30 days, deep green, like really, really awesome. Uh, I could dive more into that if you want, but I won't just yet before I answer some of these other questions. So, uh, Nicholas, name of the people in the master in the master circle. So, some of the people in the master circle right now, in one of the masterminds right now, is uh, Joe Martino from Collective Evolution. We've got uh, Chris Agnos from Sustainable Human. Uh, myself, there is Lawrence, who also is part of the Bahala movement, but represents Barefoot College in India. Uh, we have uh, Stephen Bankarts from Spirit Science that comes into some of these masterminds. But the mastermind that I'm talking about for this class, for the most part, would also um, generally kind of, I want to say it will cover, we're going to try and keep it within the group so that you guys can all build up together. And then I'll introduce you to some of these people if it's relevant or if it makes sense as well. Uh, and we will have, you know, you will have the opportunity to meet some of these guys for sure, uh, guys or girls for sure. Um, Luciano, um, let me let me talk to you about that separately for your question divided over a couple of months. I mean, it, look, this is this is something I think you, you guys can find. You, if you're, there's a will, there's a way. Uh, I'm definitely willing to figure out something, um, but it's going to have to be in a pretty quick uh, format, if if anything. Um, will Valhalla remain and develop into an educational center exclusively, or will it become a residential intentional community? Uh, it will become a intentional community. We have the pl ideally on our 60-acre piece of land, we're going to build 30 uh, houses. That's what we're looking at. We are working with landscape architecture uh, designers, uh, and we're working with a group of architects and engineers here in Montreal as well. And you know, right now the challenge is that we have to build the first building. We have to build the sustainability learning center, build a place to go to the bathroom, cook food, do all that stuff, build a classroom. So we're going to have this class physically in person. Um, and then once we've done that, then we're going to try and kind of go more and more into individual housing and stuff, uh, which I'm super excited about and, you know, it's definitely taking shape. There's also numerous communities that are popping up. Like we have, um, opportunity, we have land in Vermont. We have an opportunity in New York State, about an hour and a half north of New York City. Uh, there's people reaching out to us in Colorado, in California with land. There's even one in New Zealand uh, coming together, so that's pretty interesting. Uh, Michael, it's been great. I would consider sending out challenges on a weekly basis at the end of each webinar. It'd be great to have a go make it happen assignment. I will. So in these classes, uh, there is a challenge every single week. If you sign up for this class, we will challenge you to make sure that you do this kind of stuff every week. This is not just about fucking talking, okay, and blabbing and saying blah, 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 blah. This is about doing, okay? I I don't have time for talking. I don't have time to just blab away. I want to work with people who are truly committed to doing it. And if you are that person, then be that person. Do that thing. Okay? Um, type right at the end of the page, yeah. It's every city in the world to have Valhalla residents and neighborhoods sustainability, self-reliance, collaborative neighborhood. Yeah, so do I. Trust me, I dream about that very, very much. No problem, Fleet. Uh, Kurt, are there any plans to reproduce Valotype set up in Quebec City? Uh, I would love to. We don't have any plans just yet, uh, but right now we're really focusing on that, this kind of Montreal community, but about 20 minutes away from Montreal. But we, um, if we had land, we would do it. And, and there's some people who are looking at the Valhalla Villas to build in Sherbrooke and other places. Uh, no, it's also available with other things too, Emmanuel, if you want, um, more so than just PayPal. But PayPal would be, I guess, the easiest or best for us. Uh, do we partner up with startup nonprofits? Yes, all the time. All the time. Uh, Arcida. Bradley, there is a way to get face-to-face -face for extra money uh, for, for, for me and probably extra education. Yeah, absolutely. There's definitely ways that we can do this one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, and in the drop-down at the end of that, that page, you can find a way to book a one-on-one -on -one if you want. And I'm giving you at a discounted price compared to the normal $500 an hour charge that I have, which will be going up shortly. Um, Uh, okay, how do I convince my parents to fund this for, for me? Tell them that you wanted to invest in you and in your dreams and that you're very, 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 very curious about this kind of stuff. Um, I mean, there's, there's many, many, many different ways. I mean, 
sell something that you have that you don't need that you just I don't know like an old bike that you don't care about that you never use or something uh, you know tell them that you're going to literally make it back through the program and through committing to your purpose because I really believe that you will um, there's so many different things Nicholas I'm currently traveling <laughs> You should be. If you're able to access this, then you should be able to access everything, Nicholas, because it will be given in this exact format. So if you were able to access this class, then you should be able to access. Um, uh, doo -doo -doo. Do you think we are trying to build here as truly possible in a country as mine, Romania, where the minimum wage is $200 a month and we fight corruption? Absolutely. Uh, to be honest, it's possible anywhere in the world. Look, I've traveled to the southern tip of Argentina, to Brazil. There are places that are impoverished everywhere, but there are also things that you can offer to anyone because at the end of the day, people in Romania also have businesses. There are things that still run there. There are still restaurants that open and feed people every day. There are all kinds of stuff, and there's all kinds of opportunity. Is the scale different? Right? Is Are you selling different things if you're selling physically? Yes, but you also have access to the Internet, so you could sell the thing to people around the world, and I don't. most of my clients are not in Montreal anymore. Almost all the websites that we do are not necessarily in Montreal either, so uh, you, know, you don't have to be limited to Romania to be able to earn a living. Uh, Nicholas, hold on, I'll answer that in private. Nicholas, yeah, I want to pitch in. There'll be other, there'll be other things to, uh, to be able to, to have that conversation. We can also chat via email, by the way. Uh, yeah, go for it, Yannick. Um, we've gotten to a point where all you need is an internet connection, and that should be the only thing you really need to be able to work from anywhere. So that's why even in Romania, um, as much as, I don't know what your story is or what your plans are, but it doesn't necessarily need to be local, and that way you can also bring back things locally. So if you're working on things externally, you can then teach people around it, around you, and help them do it, and that's how you bring it back. Mm-hmm. So, Emmanuel, um, how do people who uh, run nonprofits earn or owners make a living? First of all, nonprofits doesn't mean that you can't earn a living or pay wages or earn a salary. So, most people who run or operate nonprofits just pay themselves a salary out of the nonprofit. Um, in different areas or different countries, there's different things and stipulations that go with that. Like, aka, you can't take 100% of the money um, and put it all in your pocket. Pocket. But the other thing is that you can also um, run nonprofits on the side um, of a for profit company. So, for example, we have the Valhalla Movement, which is a nonprofit arm, uh, but then we have the Valhalla Agency, which is a for profit arm. Um, and I don't want to say for profit more so than for purpose, right? We're a for benefit or for purpose company that, yes, we make money to earn our living and pay and build these kind of things. Why? Because it's easier and it's just better. It's super more, it's way more empowering. empowering. It's, the problem is not profit. The problem is the endless pursuit of profit. The problem is the abund this kind of abundance of trying to stuff it all in our pockets versus that mindset of abundance that we can have throughout all of this for ourselves. You know what I mean? So absolutely. Um, there are many, many ways to earn money through nonprofits. We even did Kickstarters, for example, to raise money for different projects that we have at Valhalla. Practice meditation and mindfulness or other if if so, what role does it play in your life, community, business, teachings? Literally, it's almost everything. I start every single day uh, making sure that I wake up. I do a uh, kind of like a five-minute journal type thing where I give gratitude to three things that I can think about that I'm very grateful for. I would say... Uh, 30% of the time, I'm very grateful for a warm bed and a roof over my head because <laughs> when I first wake up, that's what I'm feeling. Um, but more than that, um, you know, I, I, I also I use this coin, for example, that I got in China at the Great Wall when I made that impossible list. Um, and it's super, super, super empowering for me, Elvis. So, uh, yes, meditation is something that uh, is definitely going to be used. I, at the beginning of this call, I also did a quick little grounding and you know, I don't have all the time in the world to be able to do it with you guys right now, but it will be a uh, consistent piece of every single class. Um, and I also believe that your morning routines are incredibly important because how you start your day is very telling of how you're going to 
live your day and finish your days too. So uh, meditation is super important. I definitely think you guys should get on that um, if you can. By the end of class, what we, uh, what we would should should we have achieved? Well, it depends. It depends what you are looking to achieve, uh, Brendan. I mean, it, it it depends what you are going to find and commit to. So we're gonna the first the whole first class is getting clear on that commitment and to that mission, and then we're gonna work on that individually for each and every one of you. Okay, so we're gonna I'm gonna teach you those eight uh, steps, and out of those eight steps, we're going to kind of you're gonna have that opportunity. Um, to be able to kind of, you know, make sure that you fully understand the whole situation of being able to tell that story and then commit to that one thing that you're going to do over and over, like, you know, that you're really going to kind of push forward. Uh, it's not about putting it in my pocket as well as a dirty questionnaire. I want to do, dedicate myself to humanity, but also achieve my biggest dreams and having a family and decent home. Look, I'm working on my own eco home right now that we're self-designing at Valhalla something I never thought I would be able to do. Uh, I dedicate myself to Valhalla or Superhero Academy literally full-time and more than full-time. It's literally my pleasure to dedicate myself to it. I literally spend Friday nights from time to time when uh, you know friends and family or whatever are, are going out. I spend my time sometimes just working on what I love, like working on Superhero Academy. Half of all of this that you just saw and then we generated and put together was, was done with like me and Yannick hanging out at night and just shooting the shit, smoking some weed from time to time possibly, uh, or, or just, you know, having a good time. I mean, there's no, the line is so blurred between work and play and work and fun and, and all that kind of stuff. To be honest, I don't call it work. It's life at this point. You're, it's a true lifestyle. It's a mindset, um, and it's something that's just incredibly empowering and powerful. Uh... Pavel, I hope to see you in the class. Please, please join us, um, and um, yeah, have a good one. Any other questions? I know you guys have more questions. This is, I get more questions than this all the time, every time I've done one of these. Having some more water, guys. Elvis, that's super freaking awesome. I would love to hear more about that. That is super awesome. Sean, will this help us produce something similar to your own project or is it really adaptable to any kind of thing we want to build? I think these principles are adaptable to anything you want to build. If you want to talk about building something similar to what we've built, absolutely. If you want to build uh, something like Superhero Academy, look, hey, I've done it, making money doing it, so I could definitely teach you that. If you want to build something like Valhalla, absolutely. I mean, I don't know <laughs> if there's anything better than that. Mindy, yes! I'm super happy to hear that. Um... Uh, yeah, but Sean, this is this is these kind of things and practices. I'm trying to keep as applicable to to everything because you guys are a very diverse group, and and you know every time I teach this, it's, it's very different. You're right. I worked with uh, right now. I'm working with two authors. One of them is a uh, New York Times bestseller, actually. So um, he or sorry, not a New York Times, an Amazon bestseller. So you know, it's very different what I tell him than what I might tell you. But at the end of the day, the the principles are the same, and I, I make sure to cater to what the questions are that you guys are having. Uh, okay, uh, Violet, I'm gonna get there in a second. I just want to. I think I missed another one here. David, skipped one from you. Uh, you mentioned expanding and looking into opening more communities. Is it a hope to develop? Uh, Connections through this class that Valhalla can channel into as far as founding new communities and eco-villages? Yes, we are constantly doing that. In fact, I've gone, I literally went around California, I gave speeches uh, in two different places about community, uh, community building. I'm going to be going to Costa Rica in November to do some more of that. Uh, we're constantly looking for more and more of them, and there are more and more popping up. So there's one in New York State that's, that's really on the brink. Um, definitely one in Vermont that's going to happen. Um, you know, one in Montreal, obviously. So, yes, this is something that's consistently happening. 
It has happened to you to fail. If yes, how have you dealt with that? Absolutely. Absolutely. This is why I give this class is so that I can help you guys avoid some of the pitfalls in failing. I've failed so many times, and the only way that I've ever dealt with it and the only way that you should ever deal with it is get back up and continue moving. Fail forward. Find a way to get back up, brush that dust off your shoulder, and do it, and keep going. You guess what? Valhalla is super hard. It is not easy to run a massive movement and get hundreds of emails every day and answer every single one of them. It's not easy to build a website that has 2,000 uh, 2, people show up every single day. It's not easy to make all these connections, but at the same time, it's not hard. It just requires you to dedicate yourself. It just requires you to commit to be your own hero and then to surround yourself with people who believe in that mission. Not the mission of you, the mission of we, that community, right? Because even illness becomes wellness when I turns to we. So, yes, definitely failed many times, Emmanuel. Brendan is in. Awesome. Violet. Okay, I want to start a retreat for mothers in Hawaii to teach them how to understand and connect with their kids while teaching the mothers to understand themselves so that they can unhook their past crap and give their love and essence to their kids, empowering them and their kids. Where do I start? I need a week to. Put it this way. There are many, many, many different places to start. The number one thing is getting clear on why you want to do that. So what is the story behind why you wanted to do something like that? And why does it really speak to you? Because if you can communicate that, I think other people are going to get behind that. Now guess what? A school for kids and mothers in Hawaii? Yeah, a lot of people are going to love that. Okay, There are many, many, many people looking for alternative education. There are many, many people looking for a way to empower their kids and empower themselves to feel better, to let go of some of that crap, like you said. And there are tons of people out there, and I think that it's going to require good branding. It's going to require good avatar building, so understanding what the mothers really want as the decision maker who's going to bring their kids there and that kind of stuff. There's a lot, a lot, a lot to learn there and a lot to be done there that um, is super, super critical. Um, um, and you know, to be honest, like seriously, if you had to ask me how the best way to start, it's seriously by joining a class like this. That's what I did. I've learned from some of the best. I literally spoke to people like Peter Diamandis last week, who's a billionaire, 17 uh, time entrepreneur. He invited me to Singularity University, which he co-founded. Uh, he runs Planetary Resources, which is mining asteroids in, or looking to mine asteroids in space. Uh, human Longevity Project, providing um, the human genoming sequence or, or human genome mapping for under $100, trying to improve the average lifespan by 30 or 40 uh, years, or the average human lifespan. Look, I, I've learned from some of these people, and I've literally paid like I said, over hundreds of thousands of dollars that I've invested myself in so many different ways in learning, whether it be in a business opportunity or all kinds of stuff. How much capital did you need to start the site project? You mean Valhalla? Can you can you specify, Kurt? How much capital did I need, or do people need? Sorry, I'm, I'll answer that, but I just want you to specify a little bit more. I know Superhero Academy link to Valhalla. I know of Superhero Academy linked to Valhalla Movement. What's the Superhero Academy linked to Valhalla Movement? I, well, I'm one of the founders of both. So I founded Superhero Academy as my own thing, uh, but now I work with some of the people who are from uh, the Valhalla Movement and part of the Valhalla Agency, I guess. Uh, and the Valhalla Movement is the nonprofit that literally, um, you know, myself, Germ, and Greg were compelled to start at one point, and then many other people jumped on board right away, like Marty Lawrence, Vivian, Sheila, uh, numerous people at this point. Um, I can go on and on. Um, and we're looking at a, you know things like a TV show and a documentary which is being pitched right now that will probably be on a TV near you very soon. Um, so there's many, many, many links, but you know Valhalla has a four-pronged approach, really. We, we believe in um, sustainability. Obviously, sustainable ideas are, are the future, and we need to have them now, and I, I can go into many, many different reasons as to why. Community, uh, which is... We, you know, working together versus working uh, apart. So, you know, even illness becomes wellness when I is replaced with we. And knowledge. So Superhero Academy is the whole knowledge piece of what we're doing and, and teaching this. We believe that what we learn and what we know is something we need to tell other people so that they can avoid some of the mistakes, right? Like not every tree we planted did really well and we learned why and so we teach that or we're going to teach that. Um, a whole lot of different stuff on that front. So. Um, and the last one is action, by the way. So just literally doing it. It's not enough to talk about it. Valhalla is not about talk. It's about action. And I would say that the same about Superior Academy. Uh, 
What are the most important skill sets to be successful? Uh, you need to be accountable to be successful. That's the most important skill set. The mo number one thing to being more successful is to commit yourself to doing it. Number one, aka jump off the cliff. Number two, be accountable to making sure that you continue to jump off that cliff regularly, that you continue to do the things that you want to do. And eventually, once you're inspired enough and you lead with your mission and you do what you're truthfully bliss full in doing, you will be successful. It's about putting the hard work and the effort into it and about showing up and doing it for real. So I, I there's many, many roads to success, but none of them uh, do not include accountability um, and, and learning from people who have already done it. Um, none of them, you know, wouldn't include education. None of them wouldn't include mentorship. None of them wouldn't include hard work. That's for sure. So, um... I want to be here till the end. Okay, hold on. Elvis, man, I would love to talk about that. I, you know, it's, I, you guys aren't all seeing Elvis's question, but would love to talk about that. I, we can help you, man. This, this is what this class is about, man. You should definitely consider it. This is going to teach you a lot, and and a couple hundred bucks or whatever, a couple dollars is not, this is going to save you hours and upon hours of time and it's going to it's going to really help you out, man. Trust me. I, if, if I had the opportunity of doing something like this when I was probably at your position and, and not to say that I'm further or or further afford or further or further behind than you, um, I would have taken it a hundred times over and I have. Mindy, while I'm starting a retreat center in Utah for connecting with nature. So the, see, there you go. Boom. So we can make you guys accountability partners, maybe, Mindy and Violet. <laughs> yes, be the change. Do you have a site? I would love to go to it. Oh, that's just talking to Mindy. Nicholas, how important is the ability to tell a good story to make use of what you're teaching, even though someone could develop the skill through practice and experience and confidence comes with passion and knowledge? Storytelling is not something an introverted personality looks forward to. Uh, you don't have to always tell the story in person, first of all, so are you able to literally write it down? That's one thing. And the other thing is that at the end of the day, as an introverted person, if you are going to be an entrepreneur, people are going to ask you questions. And the easiest way to deal with those questions sometimes is to be able to tell that story. So um, I think it makes a lot of sense uh, that you 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 gotta you know you gotta go out there you gotta be able to say it from time to time and guess what I'm not all, always the most extroverted person either so I'll tell you that much so how much did uh, Valhalla cost to get up and running <sighs> at this point I've spent over I want to say close to two hundred thousand dollars on Valhalla probably personally. Uh, a lot of that went to the development of these uh, Valhalla villas, these new Earthship inspired buildings, but that are more conventional than Earthships with better materials than Earthships, stackable to the sky so they don't have to be like in the ground and buried, um, not, not using tires and bottles and cans, but more so using very you know, passive solar systems, <coughs> and solar panels, rainwater collection, gray water systems, all that stuff. Uh, the 60 acres of land was about 17 cents a square foot, give or take. Um, and part of that literally came from, uh, I didn't have the money when we first started. I literally uh, bought it as we went, and I just claimed that we were going to buy it, and then I did. So it was a fake it till you make it kind of thing. It was literally jumping off the cliff and building the plane as on the way down, uh, like every entrepreneur always does. Mindy, Violet, I would be happy to connect to you both if you guys both sign up, and I know, Mindy, you already are. If Violet, if you do, you guys, um, maybe I'll probably par pair you guys up. If anything, uh, Emmanuel, Mark, you said you will give me some more time to raise the money for. Da, 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 da. So the offer will be up until the weekend. The website will send me a separate email to do the later uh, registering. Go to the link that I exactly sent you, and you will have the exact same deal. I'm going to be putting out other links for other people to sign up, um, but they'll have a different price. But you will have that price. So if you go to that exact link, be dash your dash own dash hero superheroacademy.net slash be be your own hero with the dashes. Uh, you'll have that price there. Nobody else will see it. The book that answers that question very well is The Seven Habits for Highly Effective People. I don't know which question you're talking about exactly, David, but definitely a great book. How does Valhalla Movement generate profit, Jack? Uh, the Valhalla Movement generates profit through providing these kind of services, these kind of classes to people like you guys. Um, literally, we make money by 
doing services for we, we have a, a contract for example with a local garden center they ended up sponsoring the Valhalla movement with $65,000 worth of trees uh, and all kinds of different stuff we run their website we're helping them get their you know grow their garden center you know we help change makers we help people and businesses that we believe in and we we do the things that we do best for the most part that's generally marketing related uh, but some of us give permaculture classes uh, many of us do have individual ways of making money. We get uh, donations as well as a nonprofit. Uh, we do a lot of crowdfunding uh, for the bigger projects, and we try and provide value in that way. So we try and provide rewards for the people who do fund this kind of stuff. Uh, we were able to raise twenty-eight thousand dollars in six months with a Kickstarter campaign, uh, and we made a how-to Earthship uh, greenhouse B DVD and an ebook guide uh, that we gave out to thousands of people. At this point, uh, it was amazing. Violet, you definitely need to sign up. Mindy and Violet, you guys are perfect for one another. This is perfect. Uh, we'll see you again. Get the rest sometime soon. Bradley, thank you so much for showing up. Do consider uh, signing up, and I hope this was very valuable for you. Violet. Uh, like I said to, I believe, Emmanuel or whoever I was talking to, you can go back to that, to that exact same link and you'll be able to sign up on Thursday if you want. I'll give you until then, no problem. You guys have to have other questions. I know you guys have other questions. Emmanuel, dude, trust me, I am stoked to do that too. Very, very excited. Very, very excited. Boom, 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 boom. I'm just going to pull up something real quick right here. Da, da, da. I'm going to get back to your questions in a second. Yannick, was there anything else I missed, by the way? Did you notice anything? No, I'm pretty sure uh, you answered everything. I answered all of them. Okay, cool. Um, Bradley, Monday. Wait, sorry. Can you ask that again, Bradley? Three documentaries I would recommend to people in this class. Oh, wow. Uh, uh, the most powerful documentary that I have watched recently. It depends. What kind of? Give me a genre. I would say Zeitgeist Addendum, uh, where you learn about where money comes from. That's definitely one I would watch. And I know Yannick's smirking right over there. Uh, there's a couple of them. Uh, Cowspiracy is one I watched recently. It was super powerful. Mission Blue is on Netflix. Uh, Sylvia Earle, who will be coming on the podcast shortly, uh, she dedicated her whole life to marine biology and uh, and kind of aquatic life. Uh, and talking about how the world will run out of fish in 248, uh, by 2048, sorry, possibly, if we continue in the way we're going now. So, yeah, uh, it's, there's there's many, many, many more. Uh, those are ones that I've watched recently. Um, what else did I watch? Uh, Citizen Four was pretty interesting when I watched recently. I watch uh, at least a documentary every single week. I watch, what else did I watch this week? Um, Citizen Co uh, Koch or Coke or whatever. Uh, how he funds the Republican Party in Wisconsin and all kinds of different places I watched recently. Uh, I watched... Uh, what did I watch the other day? Um, I don't know. It's not coming to me. Have I done cleansing style type stuff like ayahuasca? Yes. In the uh, Amazon jungle uh, and, uh, and in different places before, I also tried something uh, in Argentina as well. I've done tons of cleansing. Uh, definitely supports psychedelics of all kinds, by the way. How would I describe my journey up until now from your own point of view? Oh, my God. Uh, journey is the right word to use, I would say. Uh, there are a lot of things I would use to describe my journey. Um, I just literally, I would say, all in all, amazing and incredible. Um, just in total alignment. It's just been such a pleasure to do everything that I'm doing right now. And it's just absolutely incredible how all of this has unfolded for, for myself personally, but more so for the group. I think it's also incredible. Peter Diamantis' books 
are great. Have you uh, any other rec uh, reading recommendations right now? If you've never read the 4-Hour Workweek, read it. Batching the work that you do is going to be super powerful, very important. Um, other books, I like some random like 1984 stuff, George Orwell, uh, or Animal Farm I thought by George Orwell is really great. Um, hmm. The type of book you want? Are you looking for like fiction or nonfiction or like something business oriented or something? Uh, I'm, um, you know what's not coming to me? If you're really interested in community, the one by um, man, what's that community girl's name there? Diana Leaf Christian. Diana Leaf. I can't remember the name of her book right now, but Diana Leaf Christian's book on community is also very interesting. She talks about sociocracy and that kind of stuff. Great book too. Um, Sean, when did you know you cleared the bend and we're starting on the upward spiral out of the mercs of uncertainty? Uh, the only time you'll ever clear the bend is when you jump off the cliffs. When you do something scary is the time where you're going to see yourself clear that bend. It's the only time. It's the, uh, it, it, you know, when did I know I was clearing the bend? It, when I first walked into that skate park and then a month later I owned it. And I was one of the owners. I walked in. I had this idea of building a lounge, a space that was like not a bar or a club with loud, blaring music, but that was different, where people can come and truthfully connect. That had uh, kind of affordable drinks and food. Uh, you know, in my hometown, I'm in a suburb of of, uh, of Montreal, so I wanted to build that. And I literally walked into a skate park, said, "Hey, I want to host a party here. Would that be cool?" And I wanted to do something and kind of start something slow, and then boom, they gave me this opportunity saying, hey, you know, our, our business is failing, literally was about to shut its door like in two months. Uh, they didn't have, you know, the, my first job, my first business had an overhead of 20 grand a month. 20 grand a month, I was 18, I was freaking out, but I did it, we did it, we turned it around, we ended up making it a profitable business, and I bought that in 20, 2007, 2008, and all that stuff was the financial crisis, okay, so... Uh, you know, the financial crisis devastated my life. Like, I was going into the bank, getting the money for a $250,000 loan to build this lounge, and then the day I was going in to get that money, they literally revoked the loan because the financial crisis had hit. So it is super scary all the time. There is always um, something uh, out there that's going to be scary, but you, you, you start to learn things. Like, you start to learn um, that it's not only about money, you know what? You don't want money just for money. You want what money buys you, right? In the same way that I don't want the product just for the product. I want the camera to capture my memories. So if the camera does a bad job of capturing my memories, I'm gonna think it's a shitty camera, not because of the build, not because it's physically shitty, but because of what it was supposed to do compared to what I thought it was good, uh, that why I wanted it to do, right? Kind of thing. So you learn that you and you start to learn all of this stuff more and more and more and uh, it's life changing it, there's no clear division because there's always a bend I'll tell you that much Sean there's always a bend no matter what even now Calspiracy Zeitgeist yeah uh, Nicholas nonfiction definitely thanks uh, okay four hour work week is definitely something I would read and I would read bold I would also read abundance by uh, Peter Diamandis um and man, I don't know. I'm hard pressed for books right now. I listen. I'm a podcast listener more so than I am a book listener. I listened to uh, recently, uh, uh, predictably rational. That was a very good one. Actually, Yannick told me about that one. I thought that was phenomenal. How people make decisions and how they're not always rational in their decision making. That was a great one. Um, what about uh, what was the other one I learned? Uh, the selfish gene. Right, talking about whether or not people are inherently selfish, um, and you know how how that applies to uh, you know the growth of our world and where we are today. That was a good one. Uh, I listened to on the fiction side. I listened to The Alchemist recently. I, I love that. So I'm an audiobook kind of guy. Uh, I wish one day to speak with such passion and happiness about what I am doing and dedicate my life for, as you do. You will, Emmanuel. All you need to do is start today. Uh, I can attest to the book by Daniel Leaf Christian. It is fantastic. I agree. It is. It very much is. Yeah, Yannick, predictably rational. He's writing the names of books and stuff in case you guys need them. Think and Grow Rich. No, I haven't. Um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. That was another one I read. That was a pretty good one as well. Nicholas, yeah, self gene is pretty interesting. Very heavy. It's not like an easily digestible book. Very, very heavy, but... Uh, 
Uh, blows my mind. I loved it. I listened to mo a lot of it on the drive uh, between uh, Los Angeles and San Francisco uh, the other day. So, well, the other day, uh, last month. What podcast? I love Joe Rogan. He is my champion podcast, and uh, I'm supposed to possibly appear on his podcast pretty soon. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, Yannick, I saw that. Um, yeah, so podcasts, Joe Rogan, I definitely love. I also listen to Tim Ferriss' podcast. I listen to Lewis Howes, is very um, inspirational to me. Uh, what else? Mark Maron is more of a comedic podcast. Uh, uh, Rewild Yourself, Daniel Vitalis, uh, Freakonomics, love Freakonomics. Uh, there's so many, I listen to so many podcasts. Tori, I hope to see your Contagious Vision uh, in the class, and I hope to learn more about it, so maybe we'll, we'll catch you there. And thank you so much for showing up and being attentive, and um, much appreciation to you. So I'm going to take a couple more questions, guys. Uh, I'm going to head off around 10 my time, whatever time that is for you. Uh, so just a couple more minutes. Yeah, dude, Lu Luciano, the, Joe is freaking awesome. I spoke to him uh, the other day when I was in California, too. I met him at the comedy store. And and uh, him and, uh, and uh, what's his name there? What's his sidekick? What's his name? My God, you think I listen to enough of his podcast every day? Oh, man. Not coming to me. Not Jamie, but the other one. Anyway, he'll come to me. Any more questions, guys? Guys, to wrap this up, this is an eight-week class. This is the only time I'm ever going to be offering it like this. I really hope that you guys consider joining right now. There are 22 of you guys still left here, uh, if not more. I think there's even more than that. There's a couple here, yeah, 20-some-odd. Uh, people, you guys definitely need to consider this. Look, I'm putting all of this out on the line, and I will every single week. Um, so, you know, what are you waiting for? What are you, you know, why wait for tomorrow when you can start today? You know, there is no better time than right now. There is absolutely no better time. Red band, that's it. Yes, Simon. Red band, that's it. <laughs> Emmanuel, I have an idea for a, of a website for people to help each other with small dreams. Can I email the idea to you so you can give me a sincere opinion on it? If it will work and it will engage people if, you, if it is feasible. Look, I'll only have a certain amount of time to be able to answer all of these questions. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'll accept that email. If you join the class, um, I will definitely accept that email because it will be my job too. So uh, I would love to hear more about it. I would love to hear more about that kind of website as well. Um, and I have a lot of opinions and a lot of experience building websites as well, so I can definitely help you there. More water. Very important to hydrate, guys. <laughs> yeah, Mindy, this is a absolute steal. I will never offer this at this price ever again. Uh, it, but it, it's you know, it's a this is a first time for you guys. Everyone here is a newbie to Superhero Academy in that sense. So yeah, I mean, I think it makes a lot of sense that um, that I'm very happy, very 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 happy to see that you're you're partaking, and we'll we'll stay in touch. I'll make sure to. Uh, to keep in contact with you, and Yannick will get your information and stuff too. Where do you sign up? So you go to superheroacademy.net slash b-your-own-hero. It should be right in the link right above this chat window if you don't see it. Yeah, I see it there, so I'm pretty sure everyone should, but you can go to superheroacademy.net slash b-your-own-hero. So let me maybe, I think I have it pasted here. Boom. There you go. Nicholas, yes, super happy to hear that. Awesome, very happy that you're joining us. Emmanuel, great, man. I'm stoked. I am more than happy to hear about your website, and I'm more than happy to help you get this off the ground, man. So like I said, guys, if you guys are on the fence, this is money back guaranteed. This never happens. I am going to give your money back if you think that you didn't learn anything, and if you showed up to every single one of the classes, you learned all of this stuff, and you really feel that you didn't 
get this, then I, I guarantee you that investment back. Okay, so this is an investment in yourself. This is an investment in your future. This is an investment in being able to be that person that you've always wanted to be. And it's an investment in being able to do it right now, not waiting now. Yeah, Simon, you definitely should, man. You missed a whole lot of stuff, but uh, there's tons that we covered without a doubt. Um, but, you know, I ended up talking a little bit about this program, and I'm sure you'd be um, interested in I'm pretty sure I've spoken to you on Facebook many times before. I recognize your name. Absolutely, Tracy. Um, you know, to be honest, vision is something that is very hard to constantly even maintain, to be clear. So I think it's something that, you know, your vision will never be 100% perfectly clear. In fact, that's exactly why you have to act upon certain things at different times. Do I think that um, this will help that? Absolutely. Uh, I'm going to work one-on-one -on -one with each and every one of you to make sure that that vision is clear, specifically in the early kind of classes, to make sure that we're just really going forward in that way, you know? So... Um, yeah, absolutely. Like the easiest way to make a clear vision clear is sometimes to just commit to it and pull pull the plug on it without a doubt. Um, it's how I've always done it. Like I said, Valhalla planted a tree, had no idea what the fuck I was doing. Owned an indoor skate park, and I was like the only thing that I had clear in my mind is I was a skateboarder when I was like 15 or like 13 or whatever. I was like a skater in high school, skating with like you know some of my best friends back then, and then I owned a skate park, and it was like. Even like my friend like Germs, who's here, who was there with me at South Park all the time, is South Park Skate Park. Um, he was like, "What the fuck? Are you serious? You own a skate park now? Like, what the hell?" <laughs> Look, if you're not clear in your mission, trust me, you will be clear. Uh, when you when you take that leap, when you when you when you dive into it, and when you get really clear on your why and your mission, it seems like that vision really kind of unlocks. Okay, so um, trust me, it's 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 gonna definitely get clearer and at times it's gonna get unclear again okay and like it does for me regularly literally you know some people are like oh you have like entrepreneur ADD I'm like no it's I'm, I just have a different vision right now for certain things but there's certain elements of your vision that never change right my personal mission is to empower people to live their dreams that's my personal mission you know a superhero academy through superhero academy is to spread this knowledge as far as wide as possible to make it as affordable as possible and also to give as many free classes as possible. So my goal is to make free education as much as possible, and I, and I will be doing it. So um, I'm already committed to doing some version of a free class every month, but it will not be, um, you know, it will not be kind of like the... Um, it will not always be on the same topic, so it will be kind of on that front. So Matthew... Uh, Sean, Tracy, look, I'm going to go further into this, okay? I'm going to go back to that story of the indoor skate park. I'm going to go back to the story of even my marketing company, okay? When I started my marketing company called Why Simply Because, okay, or WSB Media, as is known, I had no idea what I was going to do. So you know what the first thing I did was? The first ever event is that I made weed cookies on 420 and gave out over 400 free weed cookies to people at 420, giving out them, them out little business cards that said, why simply because on it, okay? And I had no fucking idea what I was doing. I wanted to go into the event marketing kind of space. I was basically going to reverse engineer the lounge that I was never able to finally get up because of uh, the financial crisis and uh, ended up selling that skate park because I wanted to build it at that skate park. Um, but I used the money to eventually travel the world, come back, no idea what I was going to do. On my last exam in university, I wrote a personal manifesto, basically like a, I want to say like a 13 or 13 verse poem, I believe, um, that is just a massive document in the middle of my exam and took mushrooms that night and then decided I was going to start WSB Media. Okay, so it was never fully clear, but I started, and by starting, you figure out what you don't want to do, and then it becomes clearer too. But the goal thing, the thing is here, sometimes, the number one way to be clear is have, having somebody literally look you in the eye, like I am right now, and call out your fucking bullshit, because you kind of know what you want to do. I actually fully believe you know what you want to do. I fully believe that you know how clear some of these things are, and I, in fact, Tracy, I've been seeing some of your stuff. It seems that some of your stuff is pretty clear. It's maybe not clear how you're going to do it all the time, 
it's maybe always not clear exactly what that's going to look like or what you're offering in that now piece, okay? But it's generally very clear in that why. Right? You kind of know why you want to do it because you were inspired at one point to do something like that. So there's no doubt about that. Uh, Simon, yeah, I know we have talked on Facebook. Uh, Elvis. Uh, Elvis, yes, I'd be willing to meet. We can definitely make something like that happen. All right? Uh, Ellie. So I'm 55, I've spent the last 25 years trying to create an eco-project in a foreign country and have not succeeded. How do you deal with the reality of forces bigger than you uh, that are obstacles, failure in short? Literally how you deal with failure is that you find a, another way that just isn't successful, right? That's what failure is to me. It's just that I found another way that wasn't successful, but there is a way that will be successful. And so the only way to deal with failure that I've ever kind of encountered and ever thought worked was that you get back up you, you like you said, or like I've said, brush your shoulders off, and you try it again. If you're really truthfully dedicated to it, then you should do it. Now, there is something to be said about doing something over and over and over again, and perhaps not being in full alignment. And my truthful story, like most of the people who tell me that, right, exactly what you just said, because I get that email every single day, okay, always are trying to tell me what they're trying to build and how they're trying to build it, but they very rarely tell me why. Very rare. And, and, and that's why, to me, Valhalla as an eco-community and as a community of people, period, is working more and more is because we are telling you why and we are getting people engaged and we do it in a, in a good way and we document. We don't document just a village and, and what we're going to build. We document the process of struggle and getting there. Okay, So there's definitely ways to, to doing it. And, and you absolutely should continue, in my opinion. Uh, will I pair you in class with similar dreams or by criteria? I'm going to pair you based on where you are physically in the world. So if like one of you guys on the West Coast, I'll, I'll think about you know getting uh, making sure that you're not in massively different time zones so you will be able to have time to chat amongst one another. I'll also pair you based on, yes, yeah, similar dreams, uh, just different criteria that I'll, I'll kind of observe between all of you. And I might pair you in groups of two or three. Um, but it depends. But you'll have you'll have accountability buddies so that you guys can like kind of schedule making sure that you guys are working together as well as myself and Yannick. So uh, and then you have you know Germ behind the camera is also helping on some technical stuff too. So there's numerous people involved in this. Uh, you know none of which you're seeing or I guess you're seeing Yannick, but none of which you're really seeing all of this. But it's it's there. We have a hundred acres in Alabama, USA. Three acres in organic production. I need. One to two hundred k to get a true self mail off the grid op going here. Looking at Kickstarter, but does Valhalla want to do satellites? Yes, we do want to do satellites. We are doing it. Um, to do a Kickstarter, you have to tell a story. If you are not offering value, like maybe we did, I guess with our, our twenty eight thousand dollar Kickstarter, we were only looking to raise ten. Um, people were able to jive into that not just because they cared about a fucking Earthship greenhouse, but because we were offering them something of true value and that we were going at it for something. And if you go and watch that video, tell me more than anything else. Did we tell you about the specifics of how we were going to build it or what we were doing? No, we didn't tell you the size. We didn't tell you this and then tell you that. We just said, hey, imagine being able to pick a tomato in the middle of winter in the Canadian, you know, in Canada. Well, guess what? That's what we told you. We told you that we were a community at the end of the video. We told you what we were combining and how we, we were really looking to explore and experiment. You know, you can make things happen, um, but it's going to be through storytelling. Every big successful Kickstarter tells a story. Um, it's not just about a product. Jamaica is a hard country to work f uh, to work. Sure, but it's a, you know what? It's probably even harder to do in in a, in a kind of a, like I would say in a Canada or in a strict city like New York City or something. But we have also buildings that are very different as well. Why is why is to help the people there to change tourism paradigm? I did document. I would love to see that document, Eli, and we can work on it. You know, this is something that we could do in the class. I, I, look, the government is surely uh, corrupt to the core. Am I a vegetarian right now? No, I am uh, definitely eating significantly less meat than I ever was before. Um, I am not a vegetarian. I believe in like I, I also believe that there's ways of sustainably hunting and doing that kind of stuff. Um, that's something I'm very very interested in and, and kind of working on. And but no, I am not a vegetarian right now. I just don't feel good all the time when I when I have been. 
I've done like juice diets and stuff and vegan diets and stuff and I wasn't feeling right at the time so I'm I'm scaling back. Well, you know when you watch Cowspiracy and stuff it's kind of hard not to. Elvis um hmm send uh, Yana can you send Elvis my email? Just a few more questions, guys. I'm already over time here a little bit, but I'm here for you guys. And for those of you who um, you know, are really worried about not being fully clear on your vision, trust me, it's only going to come when you commit to something. It's only going to come when you, when you dive <laughs> headfirst for the bottom of that cliff, and then you, you find a way to fly. You will find a way to squirrel shoot or paraglide or parachute or something You'll trust me. You're gonna find a way. We always find like we're like cats almost. Like we find a way to land on our feet every time, and and I truly believe that you will too. You guys hear germ chewing in the background? <laughs> My late husband was a drummer who created reggae beat called One Drop, the core of reggae. Wow. Eli, uh, sorry, Eli. Ellie, I'm sure there is a story. I'm not saying there isn't. I'm just, I would love to hear more about it, and maybe we can help craft it throughout this class. Anything I missed, Yannick? I think I'm getting most of them, but... <laughs> Kurt, I do this every single week. You have to understand that. Like literally during the spring and summer at Valhalla, I give a full tour of the entire project every week. And sometimes I do it twice, like depending on, you know, how many people show up or whatever. And some people show up in the morning, some people show up in the afternoon. I do coaching every single week on Tuesdays and Thursdays privately. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, so all kinds of stuff. So guys, the other thing you can do is you can add me on Facebook, okay? have more of this conversation on Facebook uh, at some point if you're having questions or you want to just talk throughout the week. But I do want you to consider taking the blue pill or the red pill tonight. Okay, this is something that you gotta kind of you gotta you gotta make happen now. It's you're not gonna it's not gonna be a better time in a month's time from now. It's gonna be a better time now. I'm telling you. I'm really telling you that. And I'm not saying that because I have st something to gain from it. Because look, I can just keep doing what I'm doing and I'll make all my bills and do all my stuff if I do it the way I do it, okay? But this is, I would love to do bigger class. I would love to get more people involved. I'd love to find ways to, you know, continue to empower people like Yannick and, and Germ and other people to, to gain from this. But um, it's definitely, you know, something I'm, I'm passionate about. I'm taking a risk here, too. Uh, thanks for your time. Can't wait to register this week. Get started eight weeks with 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. classes to achieve the dream. <laughs> wow. Man, Emmanuel, you are a warrior. I am super happy. Ellie, take the red pill. Good. Take the red pill. Seriously, take it. Go. Sign up. Go to the page. Sign up. We will talk about it. I promise. I'm not looking at who's signing up. I don't know, but, but sign up. <laughs> I, I know some of you have already signed up or have already talked about, you know, making this happen. But I will, will pair. I'll pair you guys up, and some of you guys will, you know, every one of you guys will have a chance to be paired with me from time to time too. Bum bum bum. Matthew, yes, yes, super happy, and uh, feel free to speak up more. <laughs> I can't wait to hear what you have to say, and I can't wait to hear about your projects. So signing up tomorrow, all right, man, I hope for it, but do it as much as you can. Uh, David, uh, do, Yannick, do you see David's message there? Yeah, okay, so uh, can you maybe send a request and figure that out with him right now? David, give uh, Yannick your email, and then we'll for for PayPal, and then we'll we'll figure that out. 
He'll send you something now, and then we'll we'll figure out the next one. When did you say the next one was, David? Or when when was that good for you? Well, Yannick, write that down too. Hey, Emmanuel, I was so close to coming to Romania. I hear so many good things. I would love to. Uh, Sean, the classes are at 8 p.m., so the exact same time as this class, but they're pre-recorded. So if in case you miss it or you want to watch it over again like 10 times or one time, <laughs> uh, you will have the opportunity to do that. They'll be uh, on private in uh, on YouTube and stuff, so you'll have access to them constantly. So 8 p.m. Eastern, the exact same time as this class started, um, and uh, like I said, you'll you'll have access constantly. And forever, too. So you're not going to have access like for that week. You're going to have access for as long as you need it. So you can go back to this in a year if you want. David, yeah, okay, great. Perfect. That's totally fine, David. Yannick, you going from my account? Do you know what my... You have my stuff. No? Maybe? You're giving me the face right there. <laughs> Here. Or just do it from yours if you want, but um, that's what it is, Yannick. David, that's perfect. Guys, for those of you on the fence, just know that I've been on that fence a freaking million times. Literally, the most recent time I was on this fence was whether or not I should dedicate $100,000 to building these eco-housing designs, taking a massive risk to basically reinvent homes, something I've never done before, of course. I've never been an architect or done anything like this. Um, and I decided to pull the trigger because if I was considering it, generally it means that I needed it and that I wanted to do it. And I'd kick myself in the in I'd be kicking myself in the ass if I didn't. You know, the, you know the wor biggest word in the English English the, apparently I cannot speak the English language, but the biggest word in the English language to me is if. What if I had done that? You know, the if word is such a scary word. It's just a word that I never want to ask myself ever, ever. I never want to ask myself what if I had done that. I'd rather do it and say, what did I learn? You know, I would rather focus on what did I learn more so than the if, because the if will kill me. I just, I can't. I, you know, people ask me, why are you an entrepreneur? I tell them, I have no other choice. It's the only thing I want to do. Emmanuel, you will definitely be able to quit the dream. Or to quit the dream. Quit your job and live the dream. It's definitely doable. Trust me. I had a shitty job. I worked at like the equivalent of like a Home Depot. Uh, something called Renault Depot as my first job when I was 16 to all the way until 17. I saved all that money to basically buy a skate park in the end. Not that I knew I was going to do that, just that it happened. And um, yeah, it, you know, I quit that and I haven't turned back since and I've been able to pay all my bills. Yeah, and I've literally in you know doubled my salary ever since. And this year, I literally doubled. I doubled. I made more money this year in the last 12 months than I've made like ever. Uh, doing some of these public speaking, uh, coaching, consulting, high level consulting, marketing, massive marketing jobs. Um, so I'm not telling you this kind of stuff out of my ass either. Are you familiar with open source ecology? The open source patents. Uh, yep. Yeah, I am very familiar with them. Very cool. There's some cool stuff. They have some stuff that's like, meh. But, uh, yeah, I know. I mean, uh, part of our plan is to make some of these eco-homes uh, kind of open source at some point, too. So we're going to do a, cr a crowdfunding campaign on our own site. We're going we're gonna to raise half a million dollars. Notice how I don't say we're going to try and raise. I say we're going to raise half a million dollars uh, to do it. We've already got numerous investors for different things, but... Um, now it's a question of like raising the money from you guys and getting you guys involved and running a uh, we're gonna run a, a physical in-person class uh, as well uh, at on the land for the build. Uh, we're looking at like f thirty to fifty people in that class. So yeah, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff going on. Okay, man, I am like running out of breath and water in my body. 
Just gonna answer some of these. I literally got like in the time of this webinar and today. I must have seriously gotten fifty or sixty emails since here, since like the last couple hours. Unbelievable. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, okay, let me find you guys again. Yeah. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff there. Yeah, meditation is crazy, Emmanuel. I can use some, some raking on my back right now. <laughs> standing desk, the thing you need to do, but when you've been standing all day, your bottom of your feet start to hurt, and you start to dance around doing one of these. Elvis, I saw that email. I haven't, I'm not, I haven't opened it yet, but I, I will. Yeah, we will, man. And please consider signing up, man. This could this is this could be awesome. It'd be really awesome. You're from Montreal. I'm happy to hear it. Ellie, are you going to sign up? Are you joining in? You'd be being a part of this mix, joining the party. There's other people I haven't heard from all that much. Jack, I mean, I heard some of I got some of your questions. Roy Johnson, Sylvia. What about you guys? You guys have been sitting there a little bit quiet. David, or Dave as well. David I've heard from. Seth. How's it going, Seth? I haven't heard from you. Manuel, go to bed. We'll sign up. Go to bed. We'll, we'll, see you, we'll see you soon, man. I'll see you next Tuesday. Worst case. <laughs> Jeez, 4.15 a.m. My God. Put some lemon in that water? Yeah, I do in the morning. Most of the time in the morning, not all the time. Now I just need water. It's too zesty for me at night. Tracy, how you been, man? I haven't seen you in freaking forever. You still around? Yeah, you are. Tuan, I think I spoke to you too. Pardon me, I, I get a lot of emails, so if I don't always recognize every name, because, you know, I wish every email came with, like, pictures of people every time. It'd be so much better. Like, if they had, like, like they should do that. They should, somebody should invent that. Like, I know it kind of exists with, like, Gmail or something like that, but not really. Like, they should make it, like, more. Email should be, like, more personal. What do you think, Yannick? Yes, Eli. Or Ellie. I keep saying Eli. Man. One of my partners. Body work training in New York. Wow. Cool. I worked with a body a professional bodybuilder as one of my uh one of my uh, mentees. Roy, man, yeah, sure, totally. You missed a lot, man. You missed the why, what, how, and now. Some some cool stuff. Is there any questions I can ask answer for you right now? Some of you guys are real quiet. It's okay. I'm quiet too when I come to these kind of things most of the time. I feel like you learn more by listening than by talking. Apparently, I I am not the example of that. I wish I can hear you. I'm going to find a way to do that one day. Maybe I'll turn on some of your mics or something. If money is a major issue, that's 
then that's exactly why you would need to join something like this, is to, is to do something about it. Uh, willing to barter? You just gotta you gotta sweeten the pie. You gotta really sweeten the pie. I barter with I deal with a lot of people. That's all I could say. I, I deal with a lot of people. And I speak to a lot of people on a regular basis. So, you know, am I willing to consider something? I mean, to be honest, I think this is an investment that uh, people need to make for the most part. Is like I said, this is never. I do this for five thousand dollars for individuals, normally. Okay. Uh. And there's some people who pay significantly even more than that. Like I said, I, I do $500 an hour consultations for some major brands. So, you know, $500 on one day of me being there sometimes, you know, it's a couple grand a day. So, uh, you know, the speeches I did in California, for example, spoke for two hours, did a three, three for three grand. So, uh, you know, I need, to, I need to find ways to finance these projects. Uh, all the money that you guys are giving is basically going to Superior Academy and to Valhalla. So it's going into projects directly into something like this. This is not what's going to pay my bills at the end of the day. This is just going to go straight into some of these projects. Nicholas, super glad to hear that it's one of those synchronicities, man. Super glad. You know, really hope to see you in the class. And I, I think I've got, just I feel your vibe. I feel, I feel like I can, I can um, pair you with some interesting people. Crystal, man, yes, thank you. Thank you for joining a little bit late. Um, but, you know, you can watch some of this later as well, by the way. Roy, okay, I missed your other message. Hold on, what did you say? What? Reading your material that led to this class intro was awesome. Was that, uh, uh, were you reading that on CE, Roy? Collective Evolution? Mindy, fully agree. There are so many people who will help you. Uh, David, I think you should be able to. I'm an Ace Grant writer. <laughs> hmm. I don't know what I would... I don't I mean... Yeah. Roy, awesome. Yeah, that was a good article. I had a good time writing that one. Ellie, find a grant, get it, then we'll talk. <laughs> I mean, it's it's a tough thing, you know. Valhalla is not, um, to me, we we we're not. I don't know. We don't look for. We don't find our money through, uh, just writing to grants or doing that kind of stuff. For the most part, we're trying to really provide value and really provide services to people, and then gain in exchange. Like literally the other day, we got um. We got uh, a piece of land in exchange for some website work. So we got an acre lot, a 45,000 square foot lot in exchange for some website work at uh, a very awesome community um, near Tromblon, actually. That was awesome. Hey, Crystal. Thank you so much. Where are you hearing from us? Where are you hearing our, our, some of this message? Yannick, if you want, by the way, uh, I think you can you can head out. I'm going to spend just a couple more minutes. Maybe I'll talk to some of these people. Mm. David. Okay, so you sent an email. All right, well, we'll, we'll figure that out. Yannick is gone. We'll figure that out. All right, David, so you have my email. And you sent one. Let me see if I got that here. Enormous amount of questions coming. Oh, my God. This email is so scary right now for me to look at. <laughs> there are so many. Oh, 
my God. David, I'm not sure I see your email. Uh, uh, uh. Well, I am getting so many messages right now. Okay, David. you have any places in China to recommend? I just got a 10-year visa, which they started offering in November last year, and I'm going to be there for a month starting next week. Wow, that's awesome. My brother is going to China in April, April 3rd, I believe. Uh, do I recommend any places in China? I would go to the furthest. Uh, if you go and pick up your Loaning Planet, go to the furthest Great Wall you can. It was a 10-kilometer hike. You'll know it if you read Loaning Planet. Best part of the Great Wall for sure. Um, it depends on what city. I mean, how long you plan on going? Oh, David, you're okay. I'll I'll look for it. I don't know if I'm going to see it, but <laughs> I'll I'll look through these tons of emails at some point in the next twenty four hours. You got it right. You have it here. Most of you, most of you should have my email. I'm just going to put it to all of you right now. One month from now, Nicholas. Okay, cool. Go to the Terracotta Warriors. Those were super dope. That was super, really uh, humbling and incredible. There was some really interesting, like, prehistoric museum stuff there. To be honest, the rest of it, uh, I, you know, I went to Tiger Leaping Gorge. I would go west. I like more of the countryside, less of the gray sky. I didn't like the big cities so much as I liked the more the, the countryside and going towards Tibet. Uh, something called Tiger Leaping Gorge was freaking awesome. It was like a two day hike. Um, I ended up saying I ended up doing like a three day version of it in the end. It was awesome. Yeah, I would, so go east, but then go. I would go. You know, I would hit Beijing and do some of the Great Wall for sure, and then I would go west. That's what I would do. Okay, guys, I'm going to wrap this up in two minutes. So I'm going to take some of your last questions now. Um, Crystal, who ended up joining, you can watch this entire thing on YouTube. You'll have the link. Because you signed up, you'll have that link, so you'll be able to get um, more information and all that stuff and, and hear everything that we just kind of went through, um, and you can learn more about all of this. What? Okay. Um, yeah. All kinds going on here. All kinds of messages. Many of you are emailing me probably. Oh, if you're emailing the info at, that's fine. That's that's fine. I'll I'll check that. Good night, David. Any more questions, guys? Last questions. See you in class, Mindy. Thanks. Have a good one, too. Emmanuel. Or is it Emmanuel? I'm assuming it's Emmanuel by the way you write it. Matthew. Super happy that you're joining in. Nicholas, same with you. Couple of you I have not heard from. All right, guys. I'm closing this up. All right. 
much love, much appreciation. Thank you guys for all showing up, being here, and uh, being a part of it. And let's uh, let's make these dreams come true. Let's make it happen. All right. Have a good one.